jujitsu, striking, self-defense, and MMA. With the Jiu-Jitsu On The Go mobile application, live events, interviews, seminars, community, and more. Jiu-Jitsu On The Go. Check it out in the mobile app store or online at jujitsuonthego.com. All right, we got Sean Lohman here from Crazy 88. Starting off the day with a good match. Let's see what happens here. Got me and A.T. McCown in the building. Representing the Bolts, Javez, Baker, Hall. Sounded like he said Hafez there a little bit. <laughs> Yavez Baker Hall from Vault. Hey. Again, again, here it is Basil Hafez. Welcome to the Place of Peace Invitational. I'm joined alongside by my good friend A.T. McCown. We're going to be calling the action for you guys. We have a great day of matches, and I am excited to see this first one now. A blue belt division, no gi match, submission only. Uh, we're only doing five minutes, no overtime here. Nice little tie up. Fighting for underhooks, neckties. Yeah, both guys are doing a good job here with the hand fight. They're not giving too much up. I can see with this kind of hand fight, an arm drag being available. Ooh, Loman with a duck under there. Temp. See, with the. Um, Shout out to Baker with those shorts. They're all nice shorts. Yeah, yeah. Baker's got the. Uh, he's got the place of pieces on. I got to rep represent that. That's sad. <laughs> Still tying up here. Baker really forcing the action here. Both fighters staying in the middle of the mat. See, it looks like here with uh, with Sean, he keeps reaching those arms forward pretty good. He's doing a good job of keeping that post, but I think uh, Javi Javez could, okay. He could use one of those to pull an arm drag as he yep. tries right there. Both guys are doing a great job here of really stalemating each, on, each other. Oh, a right. pull of guard. It's like Javez is pushing for the action. He's pulling guard to try and create that uh, grappling transition here. We have uh, Sean doing a good job on top here. Maybe a, we're going to pass. Oh, we right. got the knee, knee bar. bar. Oh, he has knee it. Bar, knee he bar, has it. And hey. gets the tap. tap. Very, very slick submission here into the knee bar. That was a great transition. Picked it up right away. Give it up for your winner by knee bar, Javez Baker Hall. Great submission by Javez. Once he realized he wasn't going to get the take down, pull guard, got right into it, yeah. and straight transition, straight into that knee bar. Wasted no time. Good job. Yeah, very slick, very slick. He uh, almost like he was waiting for him to get that heavy pass, just to really take advantage of that right, right back. Up, pull the knee right away. Yes, sir. That was great. That was beautiful to see. PJJ and Illuminati Grappling Club, Carter Evans. All right. Got Carter Evans here out of Cape May BJJ Illuminati. Walking onto the uh, mat right now. MPR, Fritz Mineas. All right, Fritz Mineas from MPR. Got a little Jersey versus PA going on here. Our second match of the day. Again, keeping in that blue belt submission only. No overtime. Five minutes on the clock. Oh, we get straight into the action here. I'm loving Carter's shorts. Yes. Let's place a piece. Oh, I love that. Yeah, those are nice ones. I'm going to continue to mention anybody wearing place a piece. <laughs> Ooh. I love nice, a single attempt. Nice defense there. See, he's got to really snap on four here, try to get around. There you go. He's doing a good job of controlling him here and kind of shutting down. Seems like uh, Fritz wants to kind of come up under here and wrestle up. 
Oh, he's trying for it. See, Carter's doing a great job of driving that head down. I feel like if he can maybe shoot the arms to the side and then run around, there we go. And find himself in side control. Looking for, for points and control here. It's good at first. I feel like Fritz is doing a good job here. I feel like he needs to get his hands inside and shrimp away a little more, create that space. As well as get that left hand framing against the neck and maybe not uh, not uh, not be over top of the head, but frame on the neck would definitely. definitely behoove him a lot better in this position. Definitely agree there with that. I feel like right now with him being over the head, he's allowing uh, Carter to just continually pass here. And now he's looking like he's about to go Ooh, towards Mount. I like what Carter's doing with that one-on-one -on -one there. Very nice. Good control, yes. Two on one. Ooh, got him pinned to the mat. He can easily just walk his way up from here. Yeah, he looks like he's going and to there that. There he yeah. goes, right, right to into mount. full mount. Beautiful transition. Carter just methodically working here, trying to get as much control and position as possible. He is in mount, and it looks like he is trying to attack an arm, control the head. Three minutes on the clock. See, Fritz is, uh, Fritz is doing a good job with, with kind of slowing him down, but he's allowing him to slowly build up every time, continue to work transitions here. He needs to get those, those build base out inside and push on the hips there to be able to get him off, I feel like. I wonder if Carter is able to go for a choke here. Oh, oh, never mind, he's walking his hands up. Looks like he's Looks going like he's trying Ezekiel, to... maybe? Ezekiel is a possibility right here yeah. with this smash of the chest. And it looks like... Uh, Walk that hand up, keep walking that hand up. There you go, Carter. Oh, a nice... Ooh, could, arm, go arm arm could go armbar there. Could go armbar there. He let it go. It's okay. I think he feels very secure with this, uh, this full mount. Yeah, Carter's doing a great job, I would say, of uh, controlling his base here and not letting uh, Fritz bump him over or buck him wild. However, this is a submission-only competition. You know, I would like to see him risk a little bit of uh, position to go for a submission. There you go. have him right in front of here. It looks like he's going to be going for that Americana. He's working towards it. Fritz is doing a good job of pushing yep. on the face and trying Ooh, to create that. He has that. it locked up. He it locked. That hand. Oh. He's got to just crank it here. Yep, around the head. Lost it. Elbow to the mat. Uh, it's okay. We are at 1.30 in the time clock. Still going for it. Uh, walk, looks like he's possibly walking his way up for a triangle maybe. Could step that leg over. Yes, it is. There we go. With one minute left, we're going for that triangle. See, Let's... What I would like to see here is Fritz go to it his is. back even, really to be able to lock that triangle in tighter. And a submission only, you don't have to stay on top and mount at all times, really, because it's not going to be on the judge's decision. And like you Darce. said, I'd like to see him Darce attack attempt. a couple more submissions here. Teacup, we have teacup guillotine we can go for there. Yep, and that's exactly what it looks like he's going for. Nope, never mind. Working his way to the back, 30 seconds left. As he goes for the arm here. Going for that arm bar. It's, it's a good deep. position. He could go belly down here and he could straighten it. He's got to get that other leg inside. His angle's a little off. Here we go. Triangle. And now that's where we want. Now he's got, I think he's got the arm bar here. He's going to be able to hit that if he, oh. He could have had either the inverted or the arm bar there, I feel like. I like the inverted, uh, the inverted triangle myself, personally. Yeah, that's a great uh, one. Because you can still attack the arm or, you know, worst case scenario, get that triangle. But real good match between these two fellas. Great match so far. Carter attacking a lot throughout the end there, especially. Almost had an arm Let's bar position. Your winner by ref decision, Carter Evans. Great win by Carter. Carter Evans out of Cape May BJJ and Illuminati with the uh, decision win. Good match. Yeah, very good match. Very dominant, I would say, in attacking at all times. Uh, staying in dominant positions and not just attacking submissions, but making sure he's winning all times. So that was very good.
Up next, we got John Cooper coming from Crush Crew. And representing Team Balance, Joseph Arnold. Versus the man, the myth, the legend, Joseph Arnold. And we don't need to give his uh, instructor no introduction. We all know that, man. We all balance fans over here. Cornered by the animal, Ricardo Miglaris. It's going to be a good one right here. The man who gave you your black belt, didn't he? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. (laughs) The man who taught me everything I know. (laughs) Ooh, nice tie up. Joseph Arnold with the tie up immediately. John seems like the little shorter, stockier competitor. I think he's going to try and stay low. Doesn't seem like he wants to let him inside <coughs> here. He's at a lower stance. I think what Joe needs to do is maybe get a little lower with this stance, and then he can be able to bait John to, to get a little off balance here. You know what would be crazy if Joe went for a flying triangle? That would be crazy. The way he was pulling him back there, it looked like he was about to set it up. That. We start here from half guard. And Joseph's right up to the feet, does not want to mess around with that guard right now, wants to try and maybe get a takedown of himself, his own. Wearing the uh, Place of Peace camo shorts. Can't even see his lower half right now. Very good takedown by John Cooper. Stayed low, drove through. Very good. Got the side control. John is in a side, side control position here. It looks like he's going to have to do something. Stop John's pressure. John is doing a good job of driving in right here. Could attack the Kimura there, especially without being out right here. He could attack that and really get him to make a mistake. I would like to see uh, Arnold up on his side here. Maybe not be flat on his back. But, you know, get, uh, gets one hit by his left or right. Yeah, it looks like he's staying a little too comfortable here, fully flat on the ground. And what's giving John the ability to fully smash him now. If he's able to get to that side, like you said, I think he could create space and get yep. that shrimp. I, did, I do like what he's doing with that frame, putting that forearm against, the, uh, against his opponent's neck, Very good. which is giving him some space there where he should be able to sneak his knee in next. John. But he needs to get on a hip. John. Right, in, right now, he's staying flat on his back, and that's not doing him any favors. John is doing a great job of smothering, I will say. Um, oh, yeah. Big man jiu-jitsu. Big man jiu-jitsu right here. He's from that crush crew. You know, yep. We got the big guys over there. <laughs> get on top late. <laughs> <laughs> However, he could start attacking. Ooh, knee on belly. I like him. He's going co- for it. Do you know his coach, Omar? Omar is a, is a big yep, guy himself. Big guy, and, yes, and sir. A black belt, a good grappler. So you can see a lot of the style, very similar style. Of, of trying to shut down the offense of Joe Arnold. Oh, out of bounds. See, it feels like uh, Joe could do a better job here of trying to keep it in a closer range here. Instead of sticking his arm so long, he's giving John the, the opportunity to get underneath him and go for that takedown. Yes. Uh, Joseph Arnold could very well pull guard here. You know, if we aren't finding much success on the feet, pull guard, grab a leg. See, every time I feel like he's getting underneath that underhook there with that. Play a little De La Hiva. A little De La Hiva. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Let's go, Joe. Or, you know, uh, pull the uh, Javier's uh, Baker, uh, Baker <laughs> out. There you go. Sit to the butt, pull your opponent down. I mean, I thought that was that was a great match. He really, you know, he we, we didn't wait too much time. Got to the point where it started to be a little stalemate, and then got a submission at the right time. And his coach Ricardo is saying, "Don't accept that." I think what he's applying to is, "Don't don't accept the side control," which is 100 percent right. He wants to shrimp and create distance or space. He doesn't want to allow him just to continue to grind him out and pass. John Cooper do it, did a good job of getting the full amount there. Man, I'll tell you, John has done a consistent job this match of protecting himself from getting caught in submissions and continually driving forward with a low stance and continually passing, working a submission attempt or a takedown. With a minute left, it looks like Joe Arnold is going to have to do a little more to get this win. Mm -hmm. So far, I'm looking at John as being the dominant person in this match. Let's go, Joe. You got 
I would like to see John working towards an arm bar more, uh, or an Americana. Honestly, I love the old school Helsin sweep here where you tuck the arm because he's because John is really curling so hard on this mount that Joe could bump him and, and tuck him over to a guard, basically. But I don't think he he's not going for it. He's kind of just staying here and, and trying to not get caught. John Cooper is doing a real good job of keeping his weight real settled on the hips as well. I mean, but that's that's to be expected from uh, coming from the Crush Crew camp. You know, big guy jiu-jitsu. You're not really trying to uh, lose position once you get position. So there you go. 20 seconds here, Come right on, in the Joe. corner Come of on, Joe. Uh, Joe Arnold, Come right on, in front of Carter Lee Larice. We need Joe to get a little busy here. Otherwise, it's looking like it was going to be a John Cooper decision here. Come on, Joe. Oh, five seconds or oh, six seconds left six on the clock. Seconds. I think we know. Flying, flying armbar. Let's go. <laughs> five seconds, Joe. And shout out to Earl Trouble Smalls who just came into the building. 302, BJJ, Ricardo McGillis, Phil McGillis, Blackout. Man, great, great win by John there. I'm going to say. By ref decision, John Cooper. Yeah, great, great win by John. I'm going to be honest here. Look, I, sometimes we are biased as a, <laughs> as commentators to some people we like, but John from Crush Crew there, John Cooper did a great job. I think his his base was on point. He didn't allow himself to get bucked off or put in a bad position at all. He was patient, he was calm, fully respect. That was a great match. Ah, great. Yeah, great match, man. What's up? How you doing, brother? Good to see you, man. All right, on to our next match. Lucas Johnson versus Dennis Pratt. Lucas Johnson out of North Fork for uh, Jiu Jitsu, facing Dennis Pratt from Team Balance. Another great match headed at us right here. We place a piece, Invitational. And start tying up. Ooh, we got two guard pullers here. Ball drop down. Right to it. This, is, this seems like it's going to be a little more advanced match. Really, like no, no time wasted. Right to the grappling. Not at all. Lucas Johnson looked like he's trying to go for a sweep. Oh, ooh, never mind to the lake lock game. I see the setup. I like the setup, and I like the defense. Oh yeah. Dennis doing a good job of stuffing here, but you can't accept Keeping that. Those legs separated. Good job, Dennis. See, at, at no point here can he accept that though. He's got to continue to fight to get that leg out. There he's go. He still has it caught a little bit there at the knee line, which. Yep. Lucas could turn into another, which he did. He's turning into another leg lock attempt. However, Pratt doing a real good job of keeping the arm in there. Very good defense. As long as you keep something in between, you are okay. Keep that knee rather all the way in or all the way out. Now, the biggest thing right here, it seems like he's trying to slow it down, which is good. He's right in front of his corner. He's got to listen to his corner's advice here and defend this heel hook the proper way, which it seems like he is doing. It is very deep right now. It is, it is, but he's doing a good job of keeping his knee just outside of his opponent's thighs, which is odd. See, the thing I like him a little bit. The thing I like about this for Dennis is that he doesn't, uh, Lucas doesn't have enough room to really crank the heel here. It's more just control until he's able to break off and get that extension. So now it's turning away from that. Oh, we got a head and arm. Very good attack here. Great to go from the head and arm as a defense for the heel hook. Not expecting it. And I know his opponent was it not wasn't expecting it either. Here we have it's getting tighter. Yes, it is. It's looking like this is. If we can get our if we can get our head down to the mat and flatten our opponent out on his back. I feel like Dennis could get the finish from here as well if he's able to sink his chest because Lucas is using a lot of lower body strength to be able to still hold that leg. And right in the corner, right in his corner. Yeah, you hear Ricardo telling him to straighten that leg, which is actually a very good, very good advice to sprawl that leg out so that it's no longer in control of the other leg to be able to attack for that head and arm more. Because right now he's limited with how much pressure he can put based off of that leg entanglement. His corner said it very good at the beginning here. He needs to sprawl that leg out. Otherwise, Lucas could recoup that leg back up and attack the heel like it never left. Now, 
Basil, would you kickstand that right leg up, try to start sliding your leg out? As top guy, I would. Yeah, as top guy. Top guy, Ricardo said yeah, it already. Right sprawling there. that leg hard makes it hard for the guy on bottom to continue holding it. But we got back mount and we start an attack for the rear naked. Okay, it's very in, good position. It's in. Could attack. He's in mount right now, which is a very good position for Dennis. He's attacking a. It looks like he's going either for a head and arm or a. Americana? Maybe. Almost Americana. He's a little high right now. I would like to see him back down a little bit, otherwise, Lucas could bump him. Lucas bump and rolling, and it happens. But one of the so Fall into triangle maybe. Oh, right into right into the armbar arm attack. Slip, and he it looks like he's about slip, to have Mr. it Pratt. here. He's got to extend his legs, and he has this pinch those knees together. Lucas doing a great job of defending this, and back inside. Very technical match here. Can we go for a sweep here? See, I think he's got to stop this knee slice first. He could get a scissor sweep. But we have to be careful here because Lucas yep. could go attack that heel again, and he is attacking the heel, goes right to it. I'm going to say Dennis doing a great job so far of smashing at the right time to defend these heel hooks. Very impressed so far by Dennis's defense. 50 seconds, Dennis. And if he gets his leg out, he got the back once again. See, in this same position here, I think the best option for Dennis would be to control those hips and sprawl hard, make him have trouble holding that leg still. But see, uh, Lucas is doing a great job of really holding that, keeping his, his body curled up. Luke is going all out for, uh, for the leg locks. Yeah, he wants that heel. This is a tough one to score, I'm not going to lie here, because we have one guy attacking for the heel, which is a submission attempt. At the same time, we have the other guy constantly in top control and then attacking his own submissions. This is a very close match here. Very good match. Very technical. Both guys attacking the whole time. I don't know which way that's going to go, to be honest. It really depends on what judges we have today. <laughs> I've experienced a little bit of that myself. Let's give it up for your winner by ref's decision, Dennis Pratt. And it looks like Dennis Pratt takes the decision victory over Lucas Johnson from North Fork Jiu-Jitsu. I think it's based off of the offensive pressure. Even though he was, he had his leg in a tanglement for most of the match and was getting a heel attacked, he still the whole time stayed forward, forward pressure, attacked, right, defended up. the submission attempts, and continued to attack off of that. And right, I would say uh, he had right. more submission attempts. Yeah, technically, definitely. technically more attempts. Even though it was a longer time that he was in the submission, he had much more attempts. Yeah, yeah right. we had an arm bar attack. A, uh, had an arm. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Very naked well, attempt. Bobby, Rightfully so, Dennis Pratt, finished. but a very close match. And our first gi match of the night. There we go. And just a reminder, Basil Hafez here with my boy AT McCown for the welcome you guys to the Place of Peace Invitational. And we are getting started with the gi match now. All right, we have Mike Suarez of Balance and Bobby Riordan of, well, I don't have a gym listed here. So I'm sorry, Bobby. <laughs> Mike doing a great job here of using those grips to control his opponent's posture. On top. And one thing that he's doing a great job as well there is every time his opponent uses that shrimp to try and create space to get his guard back, he sinks deeper into it, right? Deeper in like quicksand into it to stop his opponent's regard. Doing now, a good job with that, uh, that north-south position. Ooh, oh, what, what a nice, a nice sweep. reversal yeah, there was, from Bobby. What a sweep. Very well timed. Bobby doing a good job breaking those collar grips. Using the knee slice to try to pass his guard. Oh, hold on now. Hold on now. Again, setting up for another, another leg lock attempt. Oh, I'm sorry, the first one for this match. See, Bobby did a great job there of, of switching the roles and then slowing it down instantly. A lot of times you see guys switch roles, right? And then they instantly turn it up because they want to take advantage of that. This is a very close match right now, back it and forth. It is. It is. Nonstop attacks on both sides. I like this. 
And both guys are blue belts, but they're utilizing their grips very well. This is a very good match to watch if you want to know how to control your opponent with the grips. And with this type of action that we got between these two, I'm surprised that both these fellas don't have any stripes on those belts. We have a guillotine attempt here. It's looking pretty tight. Bobby using that to possibly get a sweep here and work his way up on top. Very good butterfly sweep there. He went for the guillotine pressure, used that butterfly hook to then take him to his back, and now he's in an attacking position up top. I wonder if he's going to transition to Darce, maybe? No. Nah. Going to get a reset here to the center of the mat. Referee Des McDonald repping the place of peace. I need to get that shirt. I need those overalls. Yeah, I need them overalls and the shirt. <laughs> and back at it. Oh, oh, nice Very arm nice. attack. Yeah. Also would, brilliantly defended by Mike. <laughs> I would like to see him spin all the way around for the arm bar, but, you know, I, I am a fan of the Kimura. I'm a huge fan of the Kimura. That's one of my favorite submissions. He's so. going to that and right now. He's switching to the arm bar. And then inverted trunk? No. Right to, to the, the back. back. This is a lot of transitions here. This blue belt match here. It's great to watch. I would like to see uh, Bobby throw that knee into the armpit. That might help him with his control. However, if he does bring that arm or that uh, leg across the body, we have an inverted triangle. And I'm, I apologize for everyone who keeps hearing me talk about the inverted triangle. I've been working that a <laughs> lot lately. So, you know, when I see it, I get a little excited. Like, ooh, ooh, like do the move, do the that's, move. That's normal, right? We always practice something and want to see it a lot more. <laughs> right there, just slide that leg in and, yep, lock it up. There always we go. The There's the inverted here. triangle. There he is. Taking the advice of A.T. McCown. Bobby is locked yes, in the sir. reverse triangle, and right now he has control on the back. He's a little high. Pinch those knees, secure it up. That way you can attack both the, uh, the choke and the arm at the same time. Uh, I find it helps me out in the gym a lot. So Mike's got to be careful here because he is in the reverse triangle or the inverted triangle. If he drives forward, he could defend it, but then it could turn into another submission here, turning into the armbar maybe. Which is why I'm such a huge, uh, huge fan of the position. The thing I like that Bobby did here is that... Uh, Pull up on that. Oh, that leg lock is starting to fall out. Yep, there you go. Now it looks like Mike is a little more safe here once he unlocked those legs, but that Kimura is still there, and it's still very deep. Oh, and he rolls him over here. Yeah, got one minute on the time clock. So Mike has to use this to come up right now. Ideally, he wants to get on top, and he wants to be attacking. There he goes. Now he's got to work a pass here. Good attempt. One thing I will say, Bobby's doing a great job of slowing everything down, even the times where there's a quick transition. Looks like Bobby is... Uh, Choosing to hold on a little bit and slow down, but <laughs> Mike saying, "Forget that." Goes right to pass, getting busy. I like it. I like the aggressiveness here, Mike. Mike. Saying, "Yeah, I'm out. It's not over yet." <laughs> Mike needs to attack a bit more here to make this a closer decision, as he did was on the receiving end of Bobby for the most of that round. Good attack here. He's passing. Good pass. Okay. A little too excited there. He should have went for control first. He could have had the arm bar there. Bobby defends it very well. Ends up back in his guard. Start trying to find his way around. That was a very nice arm bar attempt. I think he got a little too excited is all. And time. Yeah, that was very close match. Good job, both these fellas in both their camps. Let's give it up for your winner by ref's decision, Bobby Reardon. Bobby Reardon. We have a misspelling. Reardon. I am sorry, buddy. Bobby Reardon. <laughs> no, but that was, uh, I think, that's based off of the continual... Constant position. attacks. Constant attacks and keeping them in, in dominant positions. If Mike would have, honestly, if Mike would have took that arm bar, maybe slowed down a little bit there, even though it was a little short time. Mm -hmm. Could have been even his way. Yes. Because he would have finished on top, but going for that arm bar as quickly as he did, getting reversed, and then now back into guard. Too many attempts for, uh, for Bobby. All right. Representing Team Balance, please, Arnold. Let's go, Blaze. Let's go, Blaze. Let's go, buddy. All right, on to our next match here. We are looking at Corey Bradley from Crush Crew. We got another Crush Crew member here going against Blaze Arnold of Team Balance. Let's go, Blaze. 
Got another crush versus balance match here. Ooh. Very nice takedown. Nice takedown by Corey Bradley there. Nice double leg. Found himself into a butterfly guard here, though. Blaze active with the attacks. Ooh. See, Corey's doing a great some, job of... Some of that jersey wrestling. He's doing a great job of knowing when Blaze is trying to tie up, and he's just saying, screw that, and going right under for the takedown. Very aggressive. I love that mentality. Like, get right to what you want to do. Shout out to Blaze, with, uh, or better yet, shout out to Blaze's parents for coming up with such a dope name. Yeah, Only Blaze. Two, two Blazes in life, and uh, it, it's I, pretty cool. I got a Blaze with Blaze sometime. Exactly. Safe here, baby. <laughs> Ooh, buggy choke attempt. I like a little buggy and choke attempt there. <laughs> yeah, Blaze is very Blaze is very offensive here. Corey needs to slow him down. No, uh, other way around. Oh, sorry, sorry. My Corey's, apologies. <laughs> Corey's yeah, Corey's doing a good job of staying up on top. Uh, found himself into a quarter guard here. Corey's, or, um, Corey's half guard. I'm sorry. Quarter half half guard here. Uh, attacking Blaze with the uh, far side Americana there. Oh, somebody's bleeding. It might be our guy Corey here with those takedown attempts. Nosebleed? <laughs> yeah. Nosebleed. It's all right. A little blood never hurt nobody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, blood sport. We all good here. So Corey's doing a great job here of pressuring and really uh, trying to shut down what Blaze is doing. I'd like to see Blaze build an inside frame and really try and get that distance created because he doesn't want to stay on this smashed half guard. Yep. Type of position Getting here. Getting towards the hip. He's not totally flat on his back there. Yes, I like that. Working his way up towards an elbow. There he goes. Good job, Blaze. Bringing that leg up. Come on, Blaze. Uh, I mean, coming from uh, Corey Bradley's side, I would like to see him get a little more control with the knees to, to pass or create a safer uh, space to pass in. Yeah, Blaze doing a great job, though, getting him back to guard here and, and slowing it down. Seemed like uh, Corey wanted to keep the speed with the attacks. Being slowed down sometimes as a wrestler is not what you want. It's when you want to pass and get the takedown and continue to progress. Blaze going for almost an inside arm lock there, like a Kimura. Now Blaze with the closed guard here. I mean, I'm personally not the hugest fan of closed guard uh although yes it it can be used as a good strategy to slow your your opponent down uh it doesn't really give you m many options as far as attacking goes uh we have our triangles we can go for we have our arm bars and things of that nature but see i like to see guys from the top here really bait the triangle attempt from the bottom guy you know you know the triangle attempt is coming you have the leverage if you can get your arm in there and make him open up that guard, you can pass right yep. away, yeah. Hey, and he's, a, he's quick, he's a wrestler. I mean, Blaze is doing a great job of keeping him in close guard and making him work and make decisions here. Uh, playing in, it's playing into Blaze's game plan. Yeah, although Corey Bradley has uh, shown some real good wrestling uh, offense, uh, once he's on top, he isn't showing a whole lot of urgency to pass. I'm not going to really say skill, but urgency. But then again, Blaze is doing a real good job of keeping the hands tied up and just constantly giving him something to work against. So let me not take any, uh, anything away from Blaze Arnold there. It's almost as if uh, it seems like he's busy on top, Corey here is, but uh, he's not having luck with breaking the guard of Blaze. Blaze is doing a great job of every time that Corey tries to attack to break the guard. He pulls him forward, grabs the arm, straighten. Straighten the legs out. Does a lot of things to break that that posture. Even how he keeps attacking one arm there. If he keeps attacking one arm, he's not going to give Corey the, op the ability to post inside on the hips and straighten out and break that guard. So very good attacking by Blaze. But let's see if he can turn it into something here. Uh, I would like to see Corey inside. go back to some it feels like we got, we got different ways of passing the guard here. We can pull on the head. We can do a kind of a, a crush, a crush pass, so to say. Uh, we can do a bring a knee up the middle. One of those uh, one of those basics. 
that we learn in jiu-jitsu. One thing I do notice here is that when, uh, when Blaze is driving him forward with that arm lock, he's bringing him forward with that arm lock. Corey is bringing his whole chest forward, so he could technically go wrap around the back, try and change the body triangle to start to slowly take the back there. Let's go, buddy. Kind of come up underneath the armpit. Or even from uh, from Blaze, arm drag possibly. The yeah, arm drag would be good here. Go Blaze. Arm this drag to try to get to the back. This is almost a uh, stalemate here at this situation. We have time. finally an open guard and the time runs out. As soon as the guard opens and we thought we could see a little <laughs> something happen, time runs out. Who do you think yeah. won this fight? This is a I close one. Control. Does it go to the wrestler? Does it go to? Corey and Corey wins with the offensive pressure. I would have been okay with that. We're going to draw. I yeah. personally feel like we should have more draws in the sport, you know, especially with some fights being as close as they are. Uh, you know, in grappling matches, it definitely wouldn't hurt anybody to have a draw. You know, what's what's the worst that's going to happen? We uh, do it again later on today. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, look, Corey did a great job there with uh, sport pressure, man. Sport pressure and his wrestling stayed in top. At the beginning of the day, if you're able to stay on top, and attack, then you're doing a good job. You're gonna yeah. find a way to win the match. And representing South Jersey, BJJ, Corey Patterson. All right, up next we have John Moeller from NPR going against Corey Patterson of SJ BJJ. Is that South Jersey Brazilian yes, Jiu-Jitsu? South Jersey Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Another classic PA versus Jersey match here. Go right into it and immediately pulls guard Corey Patterson from South Jersey. Ooh, inverted a little bit there, going for some leg locks. He is attacking that leg aggressively right now. He yes, wants he it, is. he's got it. He is okay. He's going for the calf crush. I like that. Okay. I haven't seen many guys do that. He's trying to crank it without much leverage on the knee, which is kind of, okay, he got, got it. it. Yep. Very quick, confident in what he's doing. That's good. I felt like he could have. your winner by heel hook, Corey Patterson. Very quick finish by Corey. Knew exactly what he wanted to do, went right right to it. I definitely thought it could have been defended a little bit by John Moore a little better, but either way, Corey with a quick finish and right to 30 it. 30 seconds. I like it. Yeah, 30 seconds, wow. Good job. Right I think to the that point. was the fastest match of the night. We haven't had any quick finishes like yeah, that yet. 30 so. seconds, so <laughs> let's, let's mark that. John. All right, next up, representing MPR, Antonio Fields. All right. And representing Hastings. Up next, we. Juan Ramirez. All right, coming to you next, we have Antonio Fields, another NPR, going against Juan Ramirez from Heisen Gracie. I'm not gonna lie, I love this staircase, man. I yes. feel like I'm in Titanic with this staircase. Oh yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. But instead of sharing a door, we're sharing a mat. Yeah, yeah. And there's enough room for everybody up here. <laughs> And we ain't sinking. <laughs> we ain't sinking today, baby. Let's go. <laughs> All right. And both, both of our opponents, or I'm sorry, both of our competitors, take got, it down to the mat. All right. We got the uh, Bubble B for Antonio. Juan Ramirez on bottom here. Going for it. Looks R like he was trying to set up a deep half there, but... Immediately get stopped by Antonio Fields. Yep. Yep. Right to the leg lock. Very tight. He needs to... Juan needs to have a better reaction here. He is just kind of ex seeing what's going on. I am not a fan of that with leg locks. You guys like to just sit back and see how it's going to hit their knee. You need to get your butt scooting and get out of there right away, in my opinion, unless you're going to fight it back. <laughs> I think with uh, guys like uh, Juan Ramirez, he probably is one of those real flexible guys and really doesn't have uh, many pain receptors that's going on because uh, he has uh, tattoos on the inside of his thigh. And that, that's <laughs> I mean, either way, it scares me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I could be wrong, but, you know, the last one I thought, uh, and then finish like that. So you never with legs, they can happen to the drop of a hat. You got to be careful with that. 
for sure. And we got Antonio right now just controlling the guard. He can break pass here because there's not a closed guard. He's doing it now with the knee slice. I like what he's doing with the home. Ooh, exposed his leg right away on that pass. Gets caught almost deep. It's a very, very, okay, 50-50. Juan it Ramirez <laughs> is a very wiry dude. And, yep. Oh, wow. Look there at that. There is. So, Juan Ramirez <laughs> with the inside heel hook at the three, three minute and 18. Juan Ramirez. I'm going to say ATT got me there because that, that man is flexible. Let himself get heel hooked just to heel hook back. So, yeah, respect to Juan there. That was nice. Yeah. Very slick. Yeah, that's that's what I thought I saw earlier. Was, <laughs> he was just so calm about it, like, eh. I'm safe here. Just go ahead, get in your position so I can go, uh, do the attack that I want to. I'm not going to lie. I think it surprised his opponent because his opponent was like, wait, what? <laughs> he tapped surprised. Like, I'm, I got you in the hook right now. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, that was good. That was very quick. Very good submission. Rob D'Amelio. All right, we got Lex Ludlow from NPR going against Rob D'Amelio from Balance Studios. Here we go. And Rob rocking the Saved by the Bell Place of Peace limited edition gear. If you're wearing Place of Peace, I'm going to mention it. Just understand that. Okay. <laughs> it's the Place of Peace Invitational. I'm going to talk about it. All right. I mean, that is a dope set, I will say. Yeah, so it uh, seems like uh, Lex is doing a good job of keeping his stance a little lower. I'm a fan of the lower wrestling stance in these type of matches because you don't want to give up a quick takedown to your opponent unless that's your game plan is to be on your back and go for a submission. Grabs the leg so easy, I think, just because of the height difference and how his level is here. Now we're going to end up in guard. Got a half guard going on with the knee shield. Very good knee shield there by Rob. Mm. Oh, is that in a, uh, that's a Kimura I see over there? Let's go, Rob. Is it? He's is it? Is it? But he's attacking it from a, he doesn't have a lot of leverage with that position. Oh, he has it cranked pretty bad. Oh, oh my he gets goodness. The cat. Got the Rob Kimura. Kimura. That was a wild Kimura over the head. Americana, I, I believe. Is it Americana? Yeah, it wasn't Americana. Still, My apologies. That was an Americana. Thank you, ATT. Rob Camillo. What is Americana from from the bottom position? From bottom half guard. I don't yes. think I've seen that. Have you seen that? I've I've attempted in uh, class several times, but. I don't I've think I've seen it. I've seen it attempted as well, but uh, that was very slick. To stick with it as well, like to not give up and say, you know, I'm getting this submission. His opponent didn't know how to defend it. Very good. Very good submission. Yes, the ref was just uh, probably <laughs> one moment One moment later, the ref would have stopped and repositioned them, so. Yeah, that was about to go off the mat there. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Lex with the Americana. All right. We got John Falloon from Hellfish versus Brandon Taylor of The Vault. Coming up, another no-gi match. Two great schools here. Very good jiu-jitsu quality. I know Ooh, Tim Carpenter very right well. The I know Matt Kelly very well. This is going to be a technical match if I know anything. Deep single coming here from John Falloon. But Brandon Taylor doing a real good job defending. Yeah, dropped his weight there. Very good. And it looks like he's attacking a guillotine position. Elbows a little out of place there, but right onto the arm attack. See, what I would have liked for um, for Brandon there would be to use that guillotine attempt yeah, to come up on top. top. Yep, exactly. Yep. It looks like he's trying to go for... Because we are seeing a lot of the... We're seeing a lot of the judges score if it's a close match based off of top control, which I agree with. I think that the competitor should be knowing that and seeing that and, and trying to stay in a dominant position here. Yep. If it was a street fight, you know, realistically, whoever's on top, that's who's winning usually. <laughs> if it is a street fight, the guy on bottom is going to be ripped up from the concrete. You do not want to be on he's bottom. Back, he's back, he's back. <laughs> and you know, that's uh, for those of you who is unf unfamiliar with the uh, jiu-jitsu scoring system, it is all based off of how much a uh, 
how much damage you could give to your opponent if you guys were able to strike or you know if it was a little more of a street setting uh here with these soft mats and everything like that a lot of people get comfortable with being on their back but you know in a, 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 a more realistic setting so to say no i agree with you att there i feel like uh, a lot of people are a little too content with being in bad positions and i'm a fan of it if you're going to attack for submissions and use it to get to a dominant position but you know to sit there on your back for most of the time is not not conducive at all to winning the match however we could use that butterfly guard got three minutes to left. sweep could attack the guillotine here to use it as well. We oh. could, but not from that side control position. That all that's going to do is put us in a a vine fluid like position. We don't want to be there. John uses that but. to pass. Up, 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 up. Keep moving, keep moving. Take the back, take the back. This is probably if, you could, if uh, I think John Falloon is uh. Nice. He needs to come up off of his knees a little bit. See, right here, I'd like to see Brandon sprawl his leg out and then there walk around the back. He could, I think he could do that, he, but he keeps dropping for the submission, which has given John the ability to drive forward and go with him. Now we end up with John again on top. I do like the submission, submission attempts from uh, Brandon. Like he keeps putting himself in a bad position afterwards. It's the only thing I would say. But I appreciate the fact that he's actually going for those attacks. He's, yes. You know, uh, he's willing to give up the position to take a risk, take a risk for the finish. And I think the judges appreciate that as well. So this is one of those Ooh. times, though, where you're not sure how the judges are going to look at it. I think, in my opinion, it seems like John is not, or sorry, Brandon is winning the match off of submission attempts. John is controlling the wrestling transitions. We are in a sub-only submission tournament. Back, but that's largely due to the fact that uh, Taylor just keeps finding himself out of position going for these submissions and not really having the position correct before he goes for the attack. Uh, Here you go. A guillotine attempt again. Sprawl, sprawl. And he Heavy, goes to his back but again. But let's the, so let's the arm go. ATT, yeah. at what point do you think well, you got a minute left, with all these submission attempts and him losing positions, does it go the other way against him? Uh, I don't think it's going to go against him today just for the simple fact that John Floon really isn't on the offensive as far as uh, submissions go. He's more so just trying to stay in control and, you know, make him carry his weight, which the judges may uh, may give to him as well. But it's submission only, a submission-only event, so. Yeah, I, no, I agree. I would be in a, a little more inclined to vote in favor of the guy that's attempting the, the submissions. However, I do... Oh. Nope. No, I, I do agree with you there. I, I see it that way as well. To the back. Come on, take his back. Take his take back. The if Brandon could just take these positions and control them a little more, maybe a, a little bit of a one-two breathing process, slow it down, you go. Oh. He, he could seconds, make it more seconds. of a dominant victory here. See, there, he could have just back, stayed up, on go. top and kept attacking, but he chose to go for an attempt that would end up with him on he his back. Taylor, I still think he's winning right here just because of these submission attempts are adding up here, and John is not responding. I agree with you. I mean, I, I think Brandon Taylor just needs a little bit more time on the mat to uh, learn how to stay in control of some of these positions a little yes. bit more. And once he does that, he's good to go. Yeah, great wrestling by job, but I am thinking it is going to be Bobby Brandon Taylor by decision based off these submission attempts here in the jiu-jitsu place a peace invitational. Good match either way. Real good match. Oh. Oh. Okay. I, I think ATT and I disagree with that one just because of the attacking submissions of Brandon. But like I said, if he was able to control those positions a little more instead of putting himself in a bad spot, maybe attack less submissions even just so that he could stay in a more dominant position, he would have won that easily, handedly, oh, yeah. in my opinion. Because I didn't see uh, really many submission attempts from, from John. But great wrestling, nonetheless. And Juan punches right, hearts. Representing 302, Jonathan Lopez. Let's go, John Lopez, right, with the it. place of peace shorts. I love that. Here we go. Representing, Representing 302. Bobby Let's 
go. We got Jonathan Lopez of 302 BJJ Balance nice Affiliate, lower. and we have Bobby Reardon of... I don't know because we don't have a gym for Bobby. Um, is this the second time we've seen Bobby? This is the second time we've seen Bobby. I should know his first gym. They mentioned it already. This is doing a no gi South Jersey. Oh. South Jersey. That's what it is. It's on his shirt. Yes, sir. <laughs> he's from uh, another South Jersey. Ocean BJJ County. BJJ guy. He's from Ocean County, BJJ. That is uh, De Blas, I think. I could be wrong, but I think that is De Blas. All right. Right into the entanglement here for the half guard. John doing a good job keeping those legs separated. Uh, he's been trying to set up some leg locks of his own. I like how Bobby goes right to what he wants to do. He doesn't waste a lot of time here with beating around the bush. He wants to pull guard and attack the legs. He's going to find a way right to it and make his opponent make the mistake. John doing a great job of staying on point, mm. using his technique. Okay. As he ends up on the back almost there, oh. he's got to defend the triangle here. Very good defense. See, there I would like to see him square up and drop his hips a little more. Turning away is going to give Bobby the opportunity to entangle Ooh. those legs. Almost with the uh, the half cartwheel. Bobby going right to almost a Peruvian. Nope, a guillotine, a head and arm guillotine. Nope, going to the back. It's kind of both right now. Great position for him. John's doing a great job of defending everything he's being thrown at him right now. But ends up in a very bad position here on the back. John Lopez needs to get his back to the mat. Bobby Reardon doing a great job of slowing things down, not letting the position take him. And he's taking that position and looking for the submission here. John doing a great job as well, slowing it down, defending back, everything. Yep, back to the mat, back to the mat, back to the mat. There you go, John Lopez, good job. Bobby setting up that triangle there. Doing a real good job, he has a lot up. Yeah, helping me out. I, <laughs> I was definitely supposed to be uh, cornering John Lopez today, but... We're supposed to be unbiased, but, you know, sometimes we like certain people. It's all right. <laughs> it, it's your teammate. You know, it's, it's my teammate. I respect that. I respect it. So, but, oh, yes. Bobby doing a good job with that inverted triangle. Man, I'm really uh, getting impressed. Getting a, a real a position that I really love. I'm very impressed with Jonathan Lopez's submission defense here. He has really just thwarted every attempt by Bobby. And in the, long, in the match here, the long game, he could end up attacking here and taking the second half of this with Bobby using a lot of energy to attack all these submissions. There you go, and he Ooh, has the leg. Yes, nice leg lock attempt here from John He's Lopez. Switch that under the armpit, and he has a very good heel leg attempt. There he goes. Yes. Oh, ooh. Ooh, Bob. Put it in. Tuck it. Yes, tuck it. Bobby is doing a great job here with that knee line. He understands exactly where that knee line is, and he... Knee bar? Has it at the point. I don't think he has... He's not going to get the leg attempt here because of that knee line. Bobby doing a great job of knowing where oh. his knee line is and keeping it... Oh. Yeah. Good job. Great finish by Bobby Reardon. Attacking the whole time, knowing where the knee line is. Very technical. And also great defense by Jonathan. Very good match. Very good match. Yeah, this match looked great. Yeah, that looked was, like a purple belt match there. Yeah, that was very technical, man. Uh, you know, Jonathan Jonathan had very good defense on everything that was thrown at him, and I think Bobby just kept going. He just kept kept throwing the kitchen sink at him. That was a very good match. Yes, it was. Good job, both of those got those competitors. All right. All right, next up to the stage. Hey, good job, John. Jimmy O'Connor. All right, all right. Representing Crazy 88, Dave Riley. All right, we have uh, Jimmy O'Connor from Balance Studios going against Dave from Crazy 88. Ooh, nice tie-up, nice strong tie-up here. Uh, both these, I don't think we're going to have um, too much pulling guard happening with this match. But we've got two strong wrestlers. 
Jimmy O'Connor versus Dave. Nice collar tie here. Dave has a very low stance. He's doing a good job of keeping that wrestling posture, not allowing Jimmy to build up underneath him. Using that forward head pressure, too. I like the arm drag attempts coming from both sides. Forehead to forehead. Yeah. It's going to be real interesting to see what uh what these guys look go for once they get this down to the ground. I don't think we're going to be seeing too many hill hooks this match. <laughs> it's going to be some old school pressure passing. I have to agree with you there, ATT. <laughs> Uh, we're starting to slow down just a little bit. Both competitors doing a great job of hand fighting here, really stalemating until the other one gets a takedown. I think we should see a setup more. I think they're both doing the hand fight very good. I'd like to see one of them try and set something up because both guys Ooh, are leaning yeah, very snap forward. Down. There we go, as we say that. Beautiful snap down. Very right nice into a good transition. scramble. Yeah, we are looking at a, oh, more oh. of a wrestling match this time, which I am not a fan, I'm a fan of. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not a hater of. <laughs> you know, it's going to, uh, it's definitely a lot more exciting than, uh, than a slow match. This is the kind of match where I'm looking to see if both guys get cut open on their heads with how much head pressure they're matching each other with. <laughs> Good amount of pressure here. Dave is staying in his position Ooh. and really driving forward. Dave's snap downs are just so strong here. Yeah. I mean, with the size of those triceps, I'm not too surprised. Very nice wrestling here from Ooh. Dave. <laughs> Off the mat we go. <laughs> Dave is hungry for that takedown. I don't know if that was counts to the finish. I think we're gonna have to restart here because yep, it went out of reset. bounds. I think the I think a lot of Dave's snap downs and takedown attempts because Jimmy seems to be driving his head forward a little bit. He's not as low as Dave is. Yeah, he's trying to match that, which is what I think is allowing Dave to get that snap down. He's trying to match his head level and that head pressure. I feel like he is, but then we slowly see him rise up a little bit, and that's when Dave is snapping him back down and, and getting those dominant. I think if Jimmy's able to stay at the same level as Dave, there you go, like that kind of stuff, he can neutralize it and really start to attack more of his game. But Dave is, seems like he's more of a stocky wrestling type, doing a great job of head position and staying low. He's not making any mistakes in this position. Been, he's been here before. I wonder if Jimmy has any uh, flying almost, triangles. Almost a body lock attempt there. Would have been great by Jimmy. <laughs> flying triangle would be great to see. Yes. By these big guys, I want to see that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Nice club there from Dave. Nice and strong. The thing we notice about Dave is that he is being very patient with what he wants to do. I notice Jimmy's getting a little tall sometimes. Sometimes he's getting shorter and he's going for arm drags. I would say that Jimmy is the busier guy, but Dave is being more technical with what he wants to do. He's sticking with it right here. If he doesn't get anything, if he doesn't get a take a takedown here, Ooh, I think drop. it could go to Jimmy. Flat drop. Oh, shall I use the sweep? I saw an opportunity there for uh, Jimmy with a lat drop. Commit to it. Put the leg out there as a nice little post. Especially being a taller fighter, I think he would have been able to pull that off. With those long arms, I would like to see Jimmy go for a body lock of some kind. He could really get in there and control him at a farther distance than, than Dave could control him with those long arms. We got three minutes here. 3.30 on the clock. Even I'd like to see Jimmy go for like a uh, the same collar tie that Dave's hitting him with is because Jimmy's going forward. But if we look at Dave's posture, he's all the way forward with his posture, head right on his opponent's head. He couldn't do a snap down of his own. Uh, as we get a takedown, I think that is a takedown. That is going to be a takedown. It's going to reset to the center. To north-south position. Two all points. right. Now let's see what Jimmy does with this. It seems like Dave has been wanting to be here most of the match. I don't know if he's going to be attacking for submissions or trying to finish on top here and win that way. Jimmy needs to go for submission attempts here to be able to get out of here and win this. 
from that north south I, I, or from that north south position i enjoy seeing guys uh try to attack for that uh i'm not sure if it's called a reverse guillotine where uh someone's on their back still going for the guillotine still lock it up but yeah you could from there yeah. i definitely see that for sure is that an inverted guillotine reverse guillotine <laughs> I'm going to have to check with Rick on that one. See, Dave is doing a, a very good job of just, you know, slowing down his position, transition, slow each down, transition. I'd like Me to see Jimmy try and shrimp Me to create space here. Meat get cleaver, it. get that meat cleaver. Yeah. If Dave gets that meat cleaver, it'll help him out a lot more. Ooh, to the back take, yes, knee slides up. Roll over to you. Ooh, back take, yep, roll to your left, turn there in. you He's go. Turn in. Rear Let's naked. Go. Keep turning here. Keep turning. Very good defense by Dave Jimmy. on top. Arm bar, possibly. Nope. Didn't go for it. Man, Had Dave. a small opportunity there to go for an arm bar, but nah, I think he just allowed uh, Jimmy to settle back to his back. Oh, got Ray Mysterio over here. Oh, yes. <laughs> K-Pod. K-Pod Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> yes, another man from uh, from 302. That's you, one of our black belts. You guys uh, can't see this, but uh, I'm looking at Ray Mysterio over here. <laughs> with the mask. <laughs> Come on, Jerry. K Pod Jiu Jitsu on Instagram. You'll see all his, inst uh, all his costumes. Got a minute and 40 here. It's looking like it's going Dave's way. He's controlling the top, the mountain position very well. He's not getting bucked. Very good top, heavy wrestler pressure. Knee slides, almost full mount. Yeet. I'd like to see Jimmy try and shrimp Side control. Here. Yeah, side control in the crucifix position. Looks like he's trying to attack that Americano on the far side. Tap. Dan okay, got Okay, he got it. Man, very good win by Dave. I would say from beginning to end, he knew what he wanted to do, and he was attacking it the whole time after he got this. After he got that takedown, dominated the control time, and great match, Jimmy and Dave. Up next, we got Shane Harrison from NPR yes, versus Eric Robinson from Rhino. Uh, fight, fight team? Fight team? Fight team. FT. Rhino fight team. I would say FT would be fight team, right? Yep. Or FaceTime? Next yep. up to the mat representing NPR, Shane Harrison. Shane. Shane making his way to the mat first. I like that rash card of his. And representing Rhino fight team, Eric Robinson. And Eric Robbins making his way to the mat next. What's happening? How you? Good to see you as well, man. What dap up after? Of course, ATT knows everyone here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a friendly man. <laughs> All right. Can we get right underway here with action? I mean, everyone here knows you, so. <laughs> Same deal. I pretend to know no one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, with a nice club. I always like to see that old school uh, Gracie Combatives Club. It's like almost like a punch. <laughs> Never had that? What would you do with that if you're competing and somebody hits you with a club? I'm, it's almost fist fight. I might yeah, be. exactly. <laughs> we are now, we have now entered the realm of combat jujitsu <laughs> where slaps are legal. You don't want ATT hitting you in the face with this big guy right here. Come on. Oh, you yeah, hit our two we'll Clubbing him. <laughs> Great passing here as he goes. Okay, we have an arm that is in there. He pulled it out. Okay, it was almost an armbar attempt. Very good defense by Eric Robbins as he goes. He rolls for a leg here. He's got the leg. Knee bar. Knee bar. Oh, going bar switch attempt. to the heel hook. He's switching to the, okay. Yep. Straight, on, straight ankle. Shane Harrison has his own right here. It's going to be 50-50. Who has it first? Let's see. Straight ankle. Both guys are ripping this heel hook here. Is it a straight ankle? It is a straight ankle lock. My apologies on the other side there. I cannot see that. If he could switch it to the inside heel there, he would have that as he loses it. No, nope. okay. And we have Shane attacking now. Shane could, he, the knee line is passed, so no longer a leg lock attempt there. Got to watch that knee line. Real good job coming from both of these guys, both Shane and Eric. Still technically in there. He could still lock it in here. If he's able to push him away, and Eric's doing a great job of smashing him, staying on top of suffocating so he can't be elongated and get that leg snatched up. Ooh, I like what he's doing with the uh, the right knee. 
put it on his opponent faces. See, Some would say that's a little bit of a dirty trick, but you know it's a real good way to discourage your opponent from uh, <laughs> trying to straighten out to finish a uh, heel up. The thing I don't like here for Eric is that it's hard for that person on top to smash and sprawl that leg out because the way it's entangled. Um, Shane could at any point here still grab this heel. He's yes, about he to could. grab it he right did. now. See, he could push that knee line. It's perfect if he could just kind of cup it and bring his right leg around it. Ooh, but Eric uses that to go no. for a straight uh, knee bar. Him, his his knee, knee line is out again. These guys are very close on all these leg lock attempts. That knee line is the difference maker. They keep allowing the knee line to escape them, and when no longer have it at that point. Mm. Going again. the battle of 50-50s here. These guys are staying where they want to be. <laughs> Shout out to both Shane Harrison and Eric Robinson, uh, Robbins for uh, go out. this amazing match we're watching here. Both these guys are on attack. You know, so far, I have it dead even. Yeah, as I would say it's dead, dead even. even as well. Both guys have been aggressive on that leg. But one, say, one thing I would say is that both guys have made the mistake of allowing the knee line to get past their crotch area and then still try to crank the knee bar or the heel hook. I think if they take the time to recollect that knee inside their crotch area, that, that knee line we're talking about, then they can crank that heel hook properly and not lose it. So in layman's terms, what you are saying, sir, is position before submission. Yes, position before submission always. So for all those new jujitsu players out there, remember you want to get into a good position first before we go for those attacks. Uh, we also saw that a lot coming from the uh, from a fight earlier or yes, that on the card. Uh, I think that was uh, uh, Brandon Taylor and John Falloon. Yes. We kept seeing John end up in the dominant positions based off of a, maybe I would say a bad or not as perfect attempt by uh, deep this triangle is by so tight here it is very tight and, and we had a submission very tight very beautiful triangle there no reason to keep your head down that was a very close match yes it was we had a triangle right, finish there we go by triangle Eric Robbins. Eric Robbins, which your triangle Rhino fight finish? team gets the win. Good job, both of those guys. Man, that was an amazing match there. A lot of leg lock entanglements happening. Very close match. That one could have gone either way. Either way, at any moment. Like you said earlier, that knee, that knee line was really the difference between that yeah. match there. Yeah, Each I time mean, they both went for uh, their submission attempts, both of them was able to get the knee line pass and Pentagon just shut down. MMA, Ricky Nava. All right. We got Ricky Nava of Pentagon MMA taking on Mason Gray of Movement Arts. This is a 185-pound gi match. I love to see big guys in the gi. I don't know why. I just love to see it. Uh, because it slows the game down a little bit more. We are able to uh, to see a little more technique come through. Definitely. Definitely. Gray. This is a 185 pound? Well, remember, these guys aren't cutting weight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is what they walk around at. I would say. Remember, as a, even you as a 70. This, you this looks like a 155 pound. 190? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like 200 right well, now. Exactly. Exactly. I've been eating. <laughs> I've been enjoying myself, bro. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Right to the guard. If we see both guys attack, get the grips. Ricky Nava on top here. Yes. Or, I'm sorry, inside the guard. Mason, uh, Mason Gray. Uh, Mason Gray doing a good job of uh, getting a collar tie here. Deep in that collar. Almost a sweep attempt there. We have Mason Gray working on bottom here, trying to create some space. Ricky's doing a good job of keeping his posture, kind of driving into him. Keeping a high close guard here. And 
basically what I mean by that is uh, he's keeping his feet closer up towards the shoulders than keeping them down settled by the hips. What that allows you to do is there you go. Yeah, Mason Mason was trying to get it allows a Allows you to open up here. for tax a little bit more. Hey, hey I love that ninja attack. roll. I love that. That ninja roll to the back take. Very, very slick by Mason Gray. I wonder if Mason Gray... Uh, what is that uh, submission called? So this is what I'd like to see here is, is different from the other matches. Slow it down. Slow it down. Control this position and really to take advantage of having this guy's back. That was a really nice sweep. I like what Mason Gray is doing here. He's setting up for, for a lapel choke. Ricky's got to find a way to shrimp his, get his back to the mat. But as he says that, as I say, as I say that, switch to the other side. Mason Gray controlling here, doing a good job. Man. Attacking the lapels. Oh, it's the full guard, or it's the, uh, full back mount. Both hooks in, all hooks in. Right here, he's going to flatten him out. It looks like he's got his legs tangled up a little bit, but see, that is the thing there with that gi. It makes it hard to go right to flatten out because the guy could lock up your feet. Like he has, Ricky has the legs locked up. Just crush the jaw. Sometimes it is not crush enough. Crush the jawline. Sometimes that, that foot lock there that Ricky has is not enough because he has his back taken right here, and, and Mason is really looking for that finish, not even worrying about that, that ankle lock that he has with the, the legs there. And sidebar also for those new jiu-jitsu guys, uh, anytime you are in a back mount, you do not want to cross your feet for the simple fact that if your opponent has the, uh, the know-how, all they have to do is cross their feet in front of you and that ankle locks you even though you're attacking on the back. So uh, new jiu-jitsu guys, my white belts out there, do not cross your feet whenever you get to yourself to that backpack position. But one thing I will say is we just saw that happen and... Uh you know, the, uh, the other guy didn't care. Fine. Yeah, the other guy didn't care. It's fine. It's so, just fine. So exactly. Just know that you can get your foot broken, and just you have to have I don't care mentality if yep. you want to do it. Yep. <laughs> Ricky staying dominant here. See, I would have liked to see Mason not allow him to just come right up top and take a half guard attack here. He was in a dominant position. He could have controlled it more. I think it's because he likes, he, which I, I'm a fan of as well, being in the guard, using the lapel, that cross-collar lapel grip mm -hmm. to control your opponent's posture. Yeah, and as I say that, he yep. gets the same exact the sweep same? off of it again. Very right nice. back to the back. Very nice. And now it's a side control. All right, that is Mason Gray's sweep. Keep a lookout for that. <laughs> Shall we <laughs> rename it? Yeah, we got it <laughs> two, two times in a row. Very clean. I like that. At least for this match. Mason Gray, you get it for today. <laughs> that's, that's, your, that's your sweep today. <laughs> Good control here. Controlling the belt. Taking his time here. You see Ricky Nava trying to collect himself from that bottom position yeah. there. We have one minute left in this match. At the moment, I'm thinking it's going to be Mason Gray based off these two beautiful sweeps. Although Ricky is doing a good job of responding, I feel like he is a little late with his responses. And in this chess match, it seems that Mason is making the first moves every time. Right, 15 seconds left here. Mason Gray looks like he's gonna stay in dominant position and continue to win this match. Ricky did a good job here defending, but I'd like to see next time a little more attacking to be able to take the upper hand. Time. And that is time. Yeah, Mason Gray with those two sweeps. Honestly, I love the sweeps. Very, very good sweeps that he got him in dominant position and he finished the second one Give it up for your with winner, that position the whole time. Decision, Mason Gray. And I think Mason Gray definitely deserved that. We call it the Mason Gray sweep. Yep. <laughs> Even though it's been around already, but I like it. Those ninja rolls look <laughs> superb. Right, the mat, representing NPR, Justin Seekmaster. Another NPR. And representing Pentagon MMA, Nick Patton. All right, Justin Singmaster, NPR, Nick Patton from Pentagon MMA. Here we go.
The matches are just getting better, folks. If you are just tuning in, they are getting better as we go. We are going up the rankings. There was no time wasted here. As soon as they, as soon as they shook hands, a slap, a bump, and right into it. See, he's going for that arm drag, kind of obviously, which I like, but you got to hide it a little more. The more advanced we get, you're not going to be able to just be openly grabbing that arm drag and finishing it. Yep. You know, sometimes it's not always that first attack that you're going to get your opponent with. You know, it's going to be that second, third, and sometimes even fourth attempt. So, you know, we have to layer our, uh, our attacks. For sure. That was almost had, it. almost had it there, but I think it's because he's kind of obvious with it that his opponent saw it coming. You know, possibly use that arm drag to attack the leg, and once they move back or uh, try to reposition from the leg, go to a double or something. Justin's, Justin's doing a good job here of, uh, of defending a lot of these arm drags. And or possibly even use it uh, for a duck under. Oh, okay. Nick with the double body lock. Ooh, and nice. just aggressively takes his opponent down with the body lock there. Yep. I believe Nick is, uh, yeah, Nick's on top here. Nick padding on top. And the guard. As he goes for Justin the heel master. Falls for the heel hook a little. He has it. He has the position. He has it outside, but it's like a little too fast. He should have locked it up a little more. He still has it, but he's losing it, and it's out. Very good attempt. I would like to see him get a little better position on it, and he would have had it there, really, because he was deep on that leg. I think he just rushed it a little too much. Back to tying up here on the feet. A little pummel, a little pummel in action. Oh. Justin with the underhook. Ooh. Nick goes over for that head, and there we go. Right to the guillotine. Okay, and he has it. He has it, and it's on. Very quick submission. Very nice submission. Good job, Nick. I like that. I like the explosiveness. Nick I like Patton. how he knew it was on and he went right to the squeeze. Nick Patton from Pentagon MMA. Very good finish. Very good, good job. finish. Oh, well. Very nice guillotine attempt. I like that. I like the confidence and he went in there and got it done. Always a fan of the finish. But we're going for the finish. Shane Loman. Sean? I have oh, Sean. Sean. I have Sean, but they said Shane. So. Sean Loman making his second appearance of the day for Crazy 88. For and then we got Xavier Martins of Vault. Familiar with Vault Jiu Jitsu, very good school, as well with uh, Crazy 8. We have a lot of very good schools that have showed up today to this invitational and uh, really showing out representing their schools. Again, this is Basil Hafez, joined by A-Team Account. If you're just joining us, great jiu-jitsu action here at the Place of Peace Invitational. Take your time, Max. Loman working the, the standing position here. While Martins is kind of trying to work some leg lock game here. Xavier's got a very comfortable style here. He's sitting on his side hip. He's really just embracing uh, Sean to come forward into his guard. So we can intertwine him, lock something up. Ooh, Sean Martins. Oh, this, is a, this is a classic, seems like, wrestler style versus the jutsu jutsu guard puller. <laughs> but I like it. I like it. I like the rash guard. Xavier's rocket, too. It's pretty cool looking. The blonde hair. Do you, think, like a, do you think he's a natural blonde? I see the dark roots. Uh, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe would you, not. Would you die? Would you die your dreads? Nah. Blonde? Nah, mine gets sun kissed. I, I like the sun kissed look. You know, nice little brown. Bro, I, I love the way they look, man. Uh, you look like the predator, bro. You better take over a planet. <laughs> 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 Looks like we got some old school 
pressure passing versus new school leg locking. Uh-huh. Push those legs to the side. Knee on belly. Xavier is a, it's a two different approaches here. Xavier is a very laid back, kind of rolling on his back, really allowing um, uh, Sean to put him wherever he kind of wants here and just playing flowy with it. And Sean being very aggressive wrestling style, not trying to give up any position or make a mistake. You know, head pressure forward. It's a really good clash of styles to see which one is going to overtake here. I would like to see as soon as they get in the jiu-jitsu transitions what Xavier does. I think we're going to see a lot of inversions, uh, a lot of leg lock attempts. But that's just my prediction. Uh, I really like how when, uh, whenever Sean's driving in here, Xavier's going right to a hip, not even staying centered, going right to a hip to be able to get the leverage. And there you go, as he's coming up, oh, almost comes up and accepts back to the guard. <laughs> Xavier has real good scrambling abilities here and does a real good job, like you said, of finding that hip and just stopping his opponent's ability to put any type of pressure on him. Yeah, it looks like he's flowing out there. It doesn't look like mm -hmm. he's, he's really tense at all. Uh, two completely different clash styles here. The top guy, obviously, is a little more tense wrestling style, trying to put pressure and pass. And Xavier on bottom is just very laid back, trying to really... Serve energy. Yeah, see what happens, kind of. I, I think he's waiting for the... For Sean to come in to see what, what kind of grappling are we going to do here. But this mm -hmm. is kind of Sean's keeping it. And then as mm -hmm. I say that, oh, it was a very slick, almost heel hook attempt there. But Sean did a good job of sliding his knee through here. This is very close in the beginning of this match. Ooh, and another attempt there from Xavier. Sean tries to pressure pass around. I would like to see one of those cartwheel passes here from Sean Loma. Any, anytime you are dealing with somebody who is uh, so laid back, we got two options there. We can rather pick up the feet and kind of almost do a, uh, a rope slam down and a jump over. Uh, 100%. Or, you know, go for one of those cartwheel passes that we saw uh, John Lopez attempt earlier, uh, even though he didn't put his hands to the ground. No, oh, still. Okay. Okay, Xavier. let's go, Xavier. To the back take. Use it to the back. Okay. And Sean is going to reset almost here. I don't know. He stays in half guard. Okay. Dominant mm. position. It seemed like from what Sean was doing, he was attacking very straight on with an explosive movement. And it's kind of what Xavier was expecting. Right here, he's kind of losing it again. He's going to end up back to where he started. I think the best way for Sean to go about this pass would be to come into the legs a little bit and slowly work past. But he's doing an explosive movement, which is what Xavier expects. And Xavier, every time, is meeting him with the hips and stopping that explosive pass, leaving us in the stalemate that we're in right now. But he does have the bottom underhook and half guard in there. What can he do with this? As he rolls through... Looking for a leg almost, okay. Oh, oh, and Sean ends Loman up ends up with a leg lock of his own. This is a uh, mm -hmm, nice pass. Okay, beautiful pass. What are you going to do with it? He's got to stay here, mm -hmm. settle his hips. Xavier is not allowing him to settle his hips at all. Xavier does something very good that I, it's not many guys do, is when that pass comes, he's going under the armpit, straight arm lock, and allows the opponent's energy to drive past him to reset the guard. Very experienced de defense here by Xavier. Xavier definitely seems like he's uh, used to rolling with guys that are that give a lot of pressure. Definitely. Also seems like uh, the type of guy that has the uh, the purple belt warm up out in the parking lot right before uh, class. <laughs> <laughs> or the guy that his knees when he's sitting Indian style his knees just touch, touch the mat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, what I would like to see from Xavier here, I really think that he's doing better in terms of defense overall, but he is n not a kind of a, it seems like he would do good by allowing Sean to come into his guard and then work something there. I know Sean is trying to explode past it, but I kind of want to see Xavier allow him to come in because he's showing a lot of really sick, slick attempts that I think he could get if he got into more transitions, don't you think? I agree. Yeah. As of now, this is uh, basically a draw, in my opinion, even yeah. though I do like what Xavier's doing. Sean has not gotten caught and not allowed himself to get on his back. So this yeah. is basically, in my opinion, a draw right now until one guy makes a submission attempt that stands out. A draw, but 
you know, usually the refs go in favor of a guy who's been on top the most. See, I understand that. I just don't agree with that in this Me, situation. When you look at what Xavier's doing, he's not really allowing anything. Except for here back, we go. Okay, now back take. back take. This is a significant moment here in the match. The back take. You got to see Xavier, and he like, defends. He's so scrambly. I love to watch this. <laughs> the kind of guy you cannot pin down at any spot. I like it. But I do want to see Xavier get busier here. He's kind of accepting what Sean's doing. Sean's doing a great job of not getting caught and passing. Ooh, I like that hammer lock. We could go for a... Uh, no, nah, nah, he doesn't. And we go, Sean's going to end up in... He could end up in mount, but he ends up in half guard here. We have 45 seconds left. It looks like... We are going to make the distance, but... Real good scrambling coming from Xavier. I mean, every time I think we're about to find our way into one position, he just does something, stops it. Let's move on. Let's get to a better position for me. 100%. Good control of the knees. And the thing I'm impressed with Sean here is that I understand he hasn't used as much jiu-jitsu, but he hasn't made a mistake. No, he's he has very on point with if he's going to attack, if he's going to make a mistake or not, he doesn't allow himself to get caught up too much and keep this at a competitive grappling match, which I thought Xavier showed some really good things, but didn't do enough with it. Damn. Yeah. In my opinion, Sean wins that off of the pressure, off of the aggressiveness. Give it up for your winner by the Sean decision. wins. Shane. Shane, Logan. I'm sorry. I have Sean. I'm going to keep calling him Sean. Because <laughs> I have Sean. <laughs> but Shane, okay. Yeah, very good match. Very technical match. I definitely think Xavier should have kind of right, put himself in deep waters a little more. Yeah, so Xavier definitely should have put himself in better spots there. I thought he could have gotten a better chance of getting a submission, but great match by Sean and Shane. Sorry. All right, next match we have Fran Trevelli of Balance Studios, cornered by Ricardo Miglaris, and Colin Stein of Martinez BJJ, cornered by Will Martinez, maybe? I do not know yet. This is a battle of Philly gyms, Philly legends here. We got my coach, Ricardo Miglaris, who I got my first degree black belt from here in the corner. The godfather of Philly Jiu-Jitsu, cornering Fran Trevelli. And then we have the legend, Will Martinez. We have Martinez, BJJ, Colin Stein here. Go, Franny. I really like that rash guard setup by See, Colin yeah. Stein. I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna ask him where he got it from. Oh yeah. <laughs> very right into it, very slick. Fran is, this is, these are two young guys that are, in my opinion, savages. I know Fran is a beast. I've rolled with him. He doesn't roll like a kid. He rolls like a grown man. Leg locks are on full display here. Yeah, this is going to be a technical match. We've got two very technical gyms. Very good lineage of jiu-jitsu here. And uh, so far we've seen that. This is leg entanglements. Colin doing a good job here of attacking that leg and keeping it. Fran is also defending it very well. Colin has the legs figure okay. forward. Has it locked up. Colin has a very good lock here where he has other leg through and he's controlling the and, and he got the tap. I couldn't even see it from my angle, but it was a very good lock up there. I'm not going to lie, that was impressive. Give it up for your winner by submission. Let's go! Oh, wait. Did I miss that? <laughs> Fran got the submission. How did I, yeah. I didn't even see that. Oh, like my angle is off. Yeah. Good job, I, Fran. I was confused. Yeah, I was confused too. I thought it was Colin that had him in the hook. I couldn't even see it. All Me right, too. Really? What did he hit? Oh, we are all surprised about that. Good job, Luna. brother. What did you, what did you yeah, hit? Yeah, exactly. You were beautiful, bro. I thought he had you in the hook. Nah, yeah. right, good shit, bro. Congrats, man. Tough match. Tough dude, too. Good job. Good scrambles. Very good win there. Sorry, I'm a little biased. Knowing France since he was a little kid. Love that guy. Great win. <laughs> and representing MPR, Brian Lee. All right. We have 
Next up, follow that little quick submission to Savages. We got Justin Lena of Bones Academy against Brian Lee of NPR. Justin this is, Luna. What's that? Luna. Miss, uh, Miss Bell. Miss Luna. Bell. My apologies. Justin Luna. Is it on the back of his shirt? Yes, sir. Uh, we got to fix this paper. <laughs> I'm sorry for Shane as well for the previous one. I was calling you Sean the whole time. All right, Justin, Lena. Two very good schools here. Bones Academy. And Brian Lee, NPR. NPR, yes. Luna doing a good job staying busy here. Got a nice collar tie with an underhook. Let's it go. Luna. Justin, Luna. Again, back to that collar tie and an underhook. So Justin Luna is doing a good job of basing his body out. See, when guys are getting underneath you, they want to get a takedown, not allowing him. Okay, as he gets swept right there, takedown, Brian, sorry. Brian Lee. It's a head and nice arms, throw. head and arm throw, and he's got the Kese Gatame, and he loses the Kese Gatame. Now it's a back it's for Justin Tommy. Luna. Jumped it a little preemptively, but now he's coming up. He might have his wrist there. And, and we go for a guillotine here by Brian Lee. It loses the guillotine and Justin, Justin Luna. Luna on top. He's the full mount. He is going to full mount as he yeah, goes. He takes the back. Justin Luna attacking aggressively here with, with a purpose. He has the back. I think he's trying to find his way towards that rear naked. He's got one hook in with Brian a knee. Brings the second in. Body job. triangle. We are getting right to it here. Body triangle. Submission in. Ooh. No. Ooh, we have a submission here. We can still go for a submission here if he figure forms the arms and locks it up behind his opponent. What I just like to see is just Justin take his time here. He's got a body triangle with dominant control. Take his time. Just keep fishing side to side. He can get this rear naked fast. He looks like he almost has it. Yep. He has it in now. He just needs to go for the finish. Hips, Hips in. in. Right on the border. And Brian said, you are not getting it that easy. We are close here to a submission finish. Very close off the mat. Referee Des McDonald has not even stopped it yet. <laughs> no, this is too close. They are getting rug burned this is too close. like crazy. This is not what you want to be right now. Brian Lee is defending it very well. Stop. Let's get a reset. Look at that. Ooh. Reset at the right point. Almost submitted, but very good defense for Brian Lee. Justin Luna is in a dominant position here. Are we going to restart from there? Yes, we are. Yes, uh, restarting from the same position, yes. Coach doing a good job of making sure that he instructs his uh, fighter to get back to the exact same position. I'm loving what I'm hearing from the corner of Justin Luna. Yeah, Cervante is giving him very good corner advice. Very clear, coherent advice, which it is what is. you want to hear as the competitor in there because every word sounds so like calm. random crowd noise. <laughs> yeah, it's so calm with it too. And that's what you know, that's what I like in my coming from my coaches. Uh, Brian Lee's doing a great job though of really defending this this is a deep bad back position and he is not allowing any submissions oh. here. I'd like to see him turn it into getting out though. Got it locked up. Body triangle again by Justin Luna. He can he can thrust those hips in. Here, Brian could turn in. Brian could turn in. If he turns hard here, if he turns hard, he could get that hip pass. Nope, and he does not turn hard enough. Right there, locked hands. There you go. About to be over. With Justin Luna Pat. gets the rear naked choke by finish. Aggressive for it, and he got it. Very good match, very good defense at first by Brian Lee, but congrats to Justin Luna of Bones Academy. Give it up winner by rear naked choke, Justin Luna. Very aggressive, very good jiu-jitsu, and wins that submission there. What do you think? That was good, man. I really liked how he was very aggressive. That didn't yeah. seem like, I don't know, was that purple belt? Is that purple belt? It feels like a brown belt. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> both of those guys are very skilled. They uh, they both have bright futures in their jiu-jitsu careers. Or he's wearing blue. Yes, Justin Luna. I'm a fan of Justin Luna. Very, very good attacking style. All right. Up next, Ray Sims of Underground Arts. Local guy down the street against... Going against Lionsheart MMA's Ahmed. 
I would say Ahmed, because I gotta go with the sound. It could be Ahmed, it could be Ahmed, either one. I don't see him. There he is. No, it's not him. We are waiting for Ahmed to step to the mat right now. So let's talk about underground arts here. We have underground arts is based out here in New Jersey, South Jersey, run by Des McDonald and Craig McDonald. Very good gym. Uh, also the guys who run Place of Peace. So we have a local guy, and we have also Ahmed wearing Place of Peace, which I can't not hate on that. Ahmed has a very Eastern European style, it looks like, with his Start with his stand up. He's wearing those long old school basketball shorts they wore back in 2002. I love it. Yep. He doesn't we're care. We're there for those times. No, he doesn't care about the Ooh, swagger. Really? Right or the away, team. Very fast attack there. He has it. He's really cranking it. It yes, might be in. It might be in. Actually, I think this yeah, is in. This might be is. over. This is, and he's got the guard locked up. This is basically over. Ladies and gentlemen. Ray Sims doing everything his oh, power. Oh, wow. No, he, he rejects it. I love that toughness. Pulled his head out, found a way. That was locked in tighter than I think we've seen a lot of submissions tonight. So pardon me for thinking it was over. <laughs> Ahmed with that strong wrestling background. Has a close guard here on Ray Sims. Ray Sims doing everything, working his way down, trying to break open that, uh, that guard. Ray Sims taking his time, doing a good job of really breathing, ignoring that submission attempt, and now Keep controlling those hands on the, hips. the match. Stand up or possibly get a knee in to break that open. So I'd like to see Ray Sims just push on his hips instead of his shoulders here. It would help him create that guard break that he's looking to mm -hmm. get. When he goes up on the arms, it's allowing his posture to push forward, which is allowing Ahmed to keep breaking him forward and breaking him down, not get the guard break. There you go. As he goes on the hips, a little bit more lower. There we go. Just got to watch that triangle attempt when he reaches back there, which I don't know if Ahmed, the Eastern European style, is going to bring that leg up like that for the triangle attempt. A little bit of a stalemate position here. A little stalemate. Ahmed is not accepting. Um, he's not accepting Ray to try and get up and break this guard. He's content with keeping him and keep breaking him down until he finds the opportunity he wants. It looks like he's going for a wrist lock. We're trying to set up for a wrist lock. Okay, I see. What I'd like to see Ray do here is 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 try and use other techniques to break the guard. He could circle his opponent into his knee and use the knee frame to break. As he say that, we break. He breaks it, and we go to a Kessig got to me almost position to get the sweep, and Akmat ends up on top here. When he could, he could pass that leg very fast, and he oh, steps over. But Ray turns it back around and takes his back, and now we're on top. Oh, but oh, Ikimura, that is deep and out of it. <laughs> Going through a lot of submission attempts here. here we are. But find ourselves back in half guard. Ahmed locks it up. Ray Sims trying to walk up towards the full guard. Ray doing, full Ray, mount. Ray doing a good job of pressuring here. He could knee slice past. He could. Because Ahmed's guard is not is oh, straight just, open. There we go. As he does that, man. he takes mount, keeps your keep your weight balanced, and oh, Ahmed, Ahmed turns it. What a bump. A bump and roll there. Justin got a little, or and Ahmed, I believe, is going for that same pressure pass that you were asking for earlier. Or you bring, yep, pressure onto the head, bring the knees up towards the head. Ray had a really good pass there, got a little too top heavy. Let Ahmed get the control to sweep him over, bump and roll. See, I'd like to see Ray use the same techniques that Ahmed was using to try and stop him from posturing up. Ahmed's posture is all the way up here, though. It's very good for him, which you see Ray is not keeping a lot of closed guard because it is tough to close guard, keep somebody when they are postured up in that position. Doing a good job of re-breaking him down over and over again, though. Mm. If Ray would have bumped a little... Uh, 
a little stronger there. He might have gotten that uh that reversal he was looking for. Bray could hit a scissor sweep here because Ahmed is one knee up and one knee tucked. He could hit a scissor sweep here. I don't know. He's looking to get him on his back or attack from a submission here. He tries for it, but Ahmed is ready for that. What I'd like to see him do is maybe control the posture, the head posture, before he goes for the scissor sweep. He's got a Kimura here. He can use his hip to rip it off. Time. And that's and time. time. Very technical match, very defensive match. Both guys, I do not know who won that, honestly. That is a, in my opinion, it seems like a very draw, a very true draw. They both did the same thing, in my opinion, most of the match. Same. Yeah. I agree. A draw right, wouldn't hurt. Up for your winner by ref's decision, Ahmed. Okay, we have no draws today. Ahmed with it. I think it because of the Kesagatame position in the sweep. Kesagatame. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. He was able to uh, get the more leverage and the more control. Very close to match, though. Very good win. All right. Bye, Ahmed. The mat, representing South Jersey, BJJ, Corey Patterson. <laughs> Draw. All right. So we got Corey Patterson making his way back out. And representing Bones Academy, Juan Maez. All right, we have Corey Patterson of South Jersey Brazilian Jiu Jitsu going against Juan Pays again of Bones Academy. Devante back out here, cornering again. So far, I'm very impressed with uh, with the matches of his grapplers. I'm excited to see this one. Juan Pays against Corey Patterson. So Corey made quick work of his first opponent. I'm sure he'll be looking to do the same thing here. I do not know, man. These Bones guys are tough. You cannot they sleep are. on them. Very technical, very understanding of what they need to do to win the match. I am excited to see this one. And Corey sits down, invites. Ooh. We have the Jeff Glover effect here with the upside down <laughs> donkey guard. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Corey Patterson uh, letting his uh, opponent know that I'm comfortable with any position you put me in, bro. See, with, this is actually very good for him because a guy like Juan Pays, he wants to get a pass. He wants to attack submissions in that type of way. And I tell you, Corey's doing a great job of kind of following his game plan. He's giving him something that he doesn't want to deal with. Who wants to deal with an inverted guy when you want to pass? Yep. <laughs> I mean, you got a guy that's inverted. You almost passed the guard almost. You know, you just have to fight a little bit of that. See, what I'd like to see Juan do here is, is because he's going inverted, just go straight into it, straight into it with underhooks, jack his, uh, his legs up, and then throw bypasses available because he's so inverted. But it's like Juan does not want to mess with it yet. He doesn't want to go in and just jump in there. And so he's avoiding that. But I think he could go for that low double under flip up pass. I don't think he really wants to play the uh, the leg lock game at all. No. And Corey has definitely showed that he is well versed in this. I mean, he has the fastest submission of the night with 30, what, 30 seconds, 31 seconds, something like that. So yeah, Very quick. Maybe less yeah, than that. <laughs> I guess I wouldn't want to play the uh, leg lock game with him neither. Again, Corey Patterson representing South Jersey Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And we know that South Jersey and uh, Ocean County, all those guys, very good at Jiu Jitsu, leg yep. locks, very good at attacking it and setting yep. it up with a one off of it. Yep. Good job. This is a, pretty much a stalemate. Yep, leg lock. Leg lock there from Corey. Almost. Corey gets to those legs very quick. That was a very, very good attack there. See, I'd like to see right here, Juan, he could melt down like he's starting to, when he gets that knee there, it's hard to attack the leg. 
and just melt, melt, and melt into your opponent straight down with your whole body weight so they cannot attack that leg. Which is kind of what he did a little bit. And now he's, see, he's giving his legs up, though. Setting up. Yeah, he gives the leg I know up. his coach was just asking for a darts. He was trying to work it, but lost the position. I feel like that pass is there for him every time, though, because uh, Corey is so heavy on this leg attack and this inverted. Whenever Juan gets that knee to his body, he could just melt straight down. Just melt straight down and keep all your weight straight down. There you go. He's trying to do it. Corey doing a great job of really following him everywhere he goes and uh, being ready to attack that leg and go inverted. Yep, looks like he's just make, waiting for Juan to make one small mistake here. We're just settling. Oh, Juan with the back attack. Beautiful back attack. Juan to the back. Go. All right, let us see what the leg locker Corey can do from this back position. Been dominant with the leg attacks, but now he's in a very bad position here with Juan Pays. Juan Pays is about to lock a body triangle up, it seems like. Nice. See, I, I would, would not. One minute to work. Let's go. Keep working. Go for broke. Keep more traps are good too. Hand fighting good. Break it down. Again, I'm loving everything that is coming out of Juan's corner. The coaches are giving him good options here. Uh, multiple options, not even just dogging on one move. They give him multiple options and very clear and concise uh, orders or. And Juan Trent. is jumping on that. <laughs> yep, right into the arm bar. And, and we gets have a the finish. Tap. Beautiful match, beautiful finish. Juan Pays from Bones Academy by submission. Good job. For your winner by arm bar, Juan Pays. Man, these Bones guys, you cannot sleep on them. These guys are coming high level, man. I mean, it looks like. That was a blue belt. He's wearing a blue rash guard. Yes, he is. But, I mean, right, by the way these guys are rolling, this is some high-level blue belts. Andrew Ryan. All right. All right. Andrew Ryan from Underground Arts going up against Simron from Daniel Gracie. And representing Daniel Gracie, Simron. All right. We have a clash of locals here. We got... Philadelphia, Daniel Gracie, and we have Underground Arts here in Jersey, Andrew Ryan. Excited for this one. Let's see what happens. The energy these guys look like, this is about to, they're about to get into it. <laughs> here we right. go, That's right cool. to it. Yes. Quick, Quick oh, double leg. Oh man, big what a slam. slam. <laughs> big slam it. there. Oh, I love it, this is my energy. Shout out to Andrew Ryan with those uh, he got right up. nice shorts. He said, I wanna slam you again. Ooh, nice arm drag right wow, to the back take. Very good slick arm job. Drag there. Got the hooks in. Man, Immediately Andrew starting Ryan work. is playing no games, man. He is going right to attacking what he wants. Wasting no time. Right to the back here, almost has a body triangle, making Simran chase him the whole time. This is true jujitsu. Be a chess move ahead and make him react. No hesitation here. I think Andrew has the right arm across. He's looking. Nope, he's, never mind. He's got a twister position. He could go he for a twister could. here. That would be crazy. Uh, that see would a twister be crazy. In, at place of peace invitational. I'll get out there and give him a high five if he gets a twister. Yes, sir. <laughs> I got five on it. <laughs> <laughs> good head control here from Andrew Ryan. Not making any mistakes, but Simran doing a good job getting out of that back control now to a position where he can wrestle up, try and get to a mm -hmm. Anderson. Oh, and it's a oh. Peruvian necktie attempt yes, here sir. from Andrew Ryan. It is tight. It is. Leg pulling might slip the off. Hands. I like the Peruvian attempt. I love it. Actually, I'm going to say. S Simran doing a good job of defending all of these attacks here. Could go Darce here. Could shoot the Dars. Semram just one one step behind in all these transitions, but doing a real good job with his defense. Very good job with his defense. Understanding all of his positions, not letting his opponent get the best of him there. Mm -hmm. What a move. We saw that same sweep earlier almost. Tap. What a it. submission. That was a beautiful calf crush. Wow. And Andrew Ryan 
Attacking the whole time, fighting the calf crush. Very good submission. Give it up Two for minutes your in. Calf crush, Andrew Ryan. It's not often you see a calf crush right there like that. It is not. That was beautiful. But it is nice when you do get to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not Especially in the way that he pulled it off. It was just attack after attack. But if you wanted a high five, you should have got the twister. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. It was still it was still a very nice submission. I was gonna say whoever hits the twister today, you get a high five. Yes, me. sir. I'll buy you a drink. Let's go. <laughs> I want to see it. We just had a twister of the UFC recently too, actually. Yes, we did. The third one. Third one. Yeah. Third one in history. Hey, let's go. First up to the mat, representing Team Balance, Dennis Pratt. Oh, we have one more mat. Oh, I guess we have we one more have before intermission. Dennis Pratt of and representing Hayson Gracie, Juan Ramirez. So we added it. Uh, it's a five, five, right? Yeah, so it's during the mission, but it's right before the mission, so it's like, it's not a good All right. You good? Good, Dave. Dennis Pratt. He's somewhat right here. Dennis Balance. Pratt from Balance. And we have another Bones grappler coming out right here. Of course, wearing Place of Peace. What else would you wear? If you're not wearing Place of Peace, you're not wearing the most comfortable gear out there. I'm sorry. All right. Here we go for this final match before the intermission. Looking like it's going to be a very technical one. We have Ricardo Miglaris in one corner and Devante in the other of Bones BJJ. Dennis Pratt is staying very active on the top. Very good double under lift yep. up there. Oh, for this. Darce. He has a Darce locked up here. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to go for the Darce of the Anaconda here, but he could hit this, he could hit this Anaconda for sure. I think if he, Dars loses no. it instantly, goes right. To, okay, we have right to a smash pass. Okay, Dennis did a good job. Yeah, we got Dennis versus uh, Juan, Juan Juan Ramirez, I believe. Juan Ramirez of Heising Gracie, yes. Yep. Nice match here. This one's going to be pretty technical as well. Side control. Not that. Let's get that meat cleaver. Uh, and what I mean by that, guys, is where I would like uh, Dennis to take his left hand and reach into the like the uh, the the top part of the shoulder or the armpit and that what that allows you to do is kind of pressure your opponent's head to look in the same direction as you which can help you with rather finding submissions or even passing just getting yourself to a better position we're at three minute mark now Dennis Pratt doing a good job of controlling this side position here, looking for submissions. We need to see Juan Ramirez try and find a way out of here. He's doing that now. Rested his way up to that dog fight position. Oh, but Pratt has uh, had a right guillotine. Towards the half, almost mount. Ramirez looks like he's trying to you know, modified get some, half guard here. Yeah. Yep, get some leg lock work in there. Just the way he was uh, fencing his legs there. I can say, I can, you are starting to tell a lot about someone's foot fencing abilities of what their game might be. Yeah. Uh, usually guys with real good foot, foot fencing abilities are usually real good with leg locks. Uh, Shout out to the uh, uh, Dan, uh, what is it, Danaher Death Squad? Danaher Death Squad, yep. the DDS. Yep. <laughs> Shout out to those guys. 
although they are no longer a, a team, but you know, back in their, their glory days. Dennis Pratt here doing a great job of pressuring and Juan Ramirez using that knee shield to create the space. If Dennis can knee slice pass on his left side, he could get past that and he does it, loses it now back to full guard. Juan Ramirez doing a great job of thwarting all of Dennis's attacks right now. Mm -hmm. I wonder if uh, Juan would open up, be open to uh, going to Adela Hiva, working something from there. Looks like he wants to work some leg locks anyway, so, yeah. Dennis doing a good job of staying on top and now allowing himself crush. to get in a bad position here, even with this shot, I don't know, for use shoulder that, crush. Yep, use that shoulder crush. I mean, you could go Gordon Ryan here, use that shoulder crush, open up the guard, use that butterfly to uh, uh, reverse the position. You use it to get, get a guillotine. Yep. And loses it. We can also do the same. Very nice pin, underpin here of the hand. If he can use that to pass, he's about to. He just has to elevate his hips a little more here and drive his head, which he does, and he gets the pass. Dennis Pratt with a beautiful attempt there to get past the guard. Ooh, but a buggy attempt here. A buggy, buggy oh, yeah. attempt. 25 seconds left. Can Juan Ramirez hit a buggy, or do something to get himself in a dominant position buggy, 20 here? 20 seconds. I can say just uh, watching those two in that position has just Dennis Pratt brought up a position that I want to work once I get back to the gym. See, Dennis Pratt is doing a great job of, of not getting caught in submissions here and moving on to the next position ooh, as he ooh, gets ooh, a ooh. reverse triangle for a Time. second here. It times up. Time. Very technical match. Very technical match. I would say off of the attacking and top pressure, we're looking at a right, victory for Dennis for Pratt. Yeah. Ref decision, Dennis. Great win by Dennis Pratt and Team Balance against Devontae and Team Bones. Uh, Again, that was, those Place of Peace shirts are looking great out there. Those rash guards. They yep. are looking amazing. If you need some Place of Peace gear, you need to go on placeofpeacebjj.com. Basil 20 will get you 20% off. Who doesn't like 20% off? Absolutely. Don't worry. We're going to get a uh, 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 discount code for AT coming up here soon. AT20. Yeah. That works out. I found that. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll be back after a quick intermission. We'll be back to join you guys for more Place of Peace Invitational Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Representing Dante Rivera, BJJ. All right. Sam De La Hiva. Sam De La Hiva. I wonder if he's going to play De La Hiva guard. We she. are back. She. With uh, five-minute only sub only, women's blue belts now. Judge's decision, no OT. Representing Martinez BJJ, please welcome Mia. Oh, we got Mia. Let's go, mate. All right. Again, Basil Hafez here with you with ATT McCown, commentating the Place of Peace Invitational. We have Sam De La Hiva of Dante Rivera BJJ and Mia. Martinez BJJ. Aubrey. Mia wearing the black and white rash guard and pants. Sam De La Hiva in the blue and black. Sam De La Hiva being very aggressive or colorized when she gets them. Mm -hmm. Back to that collar tie, forehead on forehead. Be nice. Let's see what Sam does with it. Good hand or fight here. Good hand fight here by both ladies. What I'd like to see is one of them start to change the levels here. On, Let's get some wrestling feints and attacks to be able to get the takedown, or at least to get under, Aubrey. to get control for a takedown. Aubrey, Aubrey. Right now they are both standing pretty tall. Not in a good stance for a takedown, but Come good on, hand got fight. And also for all of my new competitors out there, would highly suggest that you guys work your wrestling, uh, offense and defense, as well as add a little bit of judo in there. Uh, you know, having some options when it comes to takedowns is definitely a huge, huge benefit to your game. 
Yeah, I could not agree more. Uh, if you are just starting off training, practice the basics and practice your wrestling. Me. Always. Oh, yeah. Let's go, me. I mean, we definitely say start with wrestling. Um, you most of your minutes. high schools uh, will have them for free, or, you know, in many cases you'll have a club uh, locally pretty cheap. So start wrestling. That is a good base to have whenever you are getting into jiu-jitsu. Uh, as well as you don't get taken down as much because you know, oh, yeah. you defend the takedown. You, you learn the importance of uh, having quick hips, you know, uh, having hips that you can both drop to the ground, get away from your opponent, as well as get in deep to your opponent whenever you are trying to get a takedown yourself. Um, De La Hiva, almost with a De La Hiva. Yes. <laughs> Pulls guard just to get some type of action going here. We got me on top and a side control looking like, uh, ooh, yep, going for a darts there or at least dropping the arm in. No. Resets. Oh, drops Go down. Like heel hook. The heel heel hook. Has Pinch it, those has knees. It. If she pinches her knees, she, she would do a lot line. better. She has the knee line, has the leg. It's about to be, it looks very deep. It does. From our angle, does. we cannot see it. She rotates the other go. side and she's rolling through. If she can suck that knee in a little more and bring it to the elbow and she loses it. Very good attempt, though, by good attempt. Mia. I would like to see her turn into her opponent, not away from her opponent. You turn away from your opponent, that it allows them to start setting up some attacks, uh, especially with that arm. Actually, we just uh, you have an arm bar right there with that, uh, that so left Mia, hand that's staying up. What Mia wants to do here is use that frame that she has on the face to create a little more space to the body. She can bring that knee in and shrimp back to guard. Yes. Instead of kind of right now, feet are just floating. Staying flat to the mat here. We don't want to do that. We want to find ourselves up on a hip. There we go. Uh, she is trying to sacrifice the back here. Which, uh, Push and get that knee in. which, although I'm not the biggest fan of, you know, we see many of our highest level guys do that just to make their way up. Uh, being, Mia, don't give her your I'm sorry, one being Turn our uh, current uh, featherweight champion. Uh, Alex Vol Volkanovsky, he gives up the back to uh, stand up and work his way back up to the feet as well. So it's not necessarily the wrong thing to do. It's just not the smartest thing to do. Yeah, it's one of those things, uh, man. It's one of those off techniques, just really practicing, not getting caught, getting in these submissions. Yeah, it actually helps you. Like, I agree with what you said about being able to give up sometimes a bad position to get mm -hmm. out, to get to a better one. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we have... Uh, Armbar attempt by Sam De La Hiva. Yes. Sam De La Hiva has the arm. She is trying to break it free here to get the arm lock extension. Mia is defending very well, holds the elbow, and we have an angle here. She turns it, she pulls it. And oh, what an escape by Mia. Martinez. Let me also just say to uh, some of our no jiu jitsu competitors. The importance of uh, that knee pressure, pinching those Time. knees. If you uh, oh, yeah. pinch those knees together, you can secure your opponent's uh, ligament a little better to go ahead and get that finish. So. Yeah, Sam De La Hiva had a very nice armbar attempt there. I think if she would have been able to secure the hips a little more, Sam De La Hiva with the win. Very good defense by mm -hmm. Mia from Martinez, BJJ, but Sam De La Hiva match. with the armbar attempt in there that gets her the win. Great match. Very good oh. match. Next up to the mat, representing 10th Planet, Christina Favola. All right. On to our next match of the day. Christina Favola of 10th. Oh, wait MMA, a second. <laughs> We have Christina Babola of 10th Planet MMA against Becca Hurd of Pentagon, 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu, sorry, of Pentagon MMA. All right, these ladies look scrappy. This is gonna be a scrappy match, I have an idea. Let's see it. Definitely gonna be fast paced here, yes. and you weren't wrong, they meet in the middle, immediately. Here we go, right to a guard pull by Christina. Christina. Very good guard pull. Controlled right, see right into the closed guard and control right away. Not Ooh, open Christina guard with setup. a rubber guard here. It's a 10th planet, very big 10th planet move. The rubber guard that she's pulling right now, using that oh, to control wow. her opponent's posture. 
Okay, the rubber guard is working. Got Becca's. the foot across the face. However, Becca doing a real good job with that knee. That knee on belly to uh, add a little pressure to, uh, you know, uh, almost. Uh, Very wiry from Christina. Doing a good job of, uh, of going for attempts and then backing off when it's not there. Becca as well, movement movement of both of these girls are very explosive, very quick. Boom guard from Christina Babola. Christina liking to be in her guard, trying to get attacks from there, not even playing with the wrestling of Becca Hurd. Good. I feel like I might see another guard pull here from Christina from what we've seen. Yeah, it's very possible. Yep, but. there we go. Sits back down. Very much so. I think the 10th Planet style, uh, not as much wrestling base, but getting your opponent to come into your guard so you can intertwine, tangle them up, and get a submission. Maybe the rubber guard, different things like that. Mm. Is what I think Christina wants to get Becca to do. Oh, but we got some leg lock attempts here, some leg lock entanglements. Again, the knee line. The yes. knee line is everything. You need to make sure you get that knee line there. Almost by Christina. Break that. Break that. Locking up here. Oh, under a hook. But sits down with it. I think too much. Christina's doing a, a good job of getting what, to, what she wants to do and get into the spots. But I think it would be better if she was able to maybe tie up a little bit with Becca so that when she pulls guard, she's able to get her into the position she wants. When she's pulling guard from so far away, Becca's able to have the distance and keep it, and not allow her to get any sweeps Ooh, or submission attempts. I in. like that staple. I like that staple that Becca just used to. Uh, Almost clear. Very nice. Almost clear the half guard there, but checking in with her corner to make sure that she's doing everything correctly here. Christina almost had a heel hook of her own there. 2.30. Becca doing a good job of uh, rolling out of that leg lock attempt. Very aggressive match from both ladies here, attacking, trying to get something going and started here. Christina mainly working in the guard, trying to get Becca to come in and give her something. Becca like doing a great job of defending. I like the way she hugged the hip there. Yep. Yep. Ooh, working the hand on the inside. Christina using that doing knee shield. Doing anything she can to. On the chest. Becca doing anything she can to work her way around towards the, uh, towards that side control position. She's doing a good job here of smashing the knee shield. If she mm -hmm. continues smashing it, she could actually sprawl her legs out and walk around the side here, but she... Christina doing a good job of using that uh, that shield that she had. As she get. gives up Mount, a little too excited to get up. Becca, good job of following up to get right into Mount position. I would Becca. like I, I would like Becca to uh, keep. Never mind, she, or if she let it go, but uh, she, she did for a second there have her arm clasped on the uh, shoulder. If she would have dropped her elbow to that other shoulder, she would have had herself a nice little choke there. Definitely. I would say Becca's doing a great job of being aggressive with her forward pressure. Even, uh, even though she was in guard and Christina tried mm -hmm. to sweep her, she just kept pressuring forward, ended up in mount out of that. And really, I think it's been the whole match. Constant forward pressure without making mistakes has got her to this position. Yep. I would like to see Becca grab onto the shoulder with her right hand. Christina's going to turn in here and explode out. out. Ooh, I like right that. Right into got to triangle. Watch out for the arm triangle bar triangle. Tap. Good Very slick submission by Becca. Wow. Good job, Becca. That was a great setup. Uh, what a match. I, I love the pressure. I would say what a match by both ladies. Very attacking on both sides. Really not, not really, you know. They're both flying by, see the pants, and just going for it. Yes. And uh, that yes. was a crazy transition. Ended up in an arm bar triangle. <laughs> yes, sir. I agree. <laughs> Becca yeah. with that pressure. Good job. Very Shout good. out to her. Yeah. Very good attack by Becca. But also a great match by Christina. Both job, both ladies did a great job. All right. Next up, we got Tatiana Kotsova from Heart BJJ. Jones. Versus... Jones. Uh, just Jones. Just Jones from <laughs> Pentagon MMA. I like that. That's like one name type of thing, you know? Like Bobby Green changed his name to King. Yep. yep. <laughs> oh, he did. Got, yeah, we got Jones. <laughs> okay. I guess he did say that in his last fight. Uh, yeah, and I remember that. I didn't realize that until an interview, and then uh, they put me on the spot with it. 
I'm like, oh, he changed his name to Kay. All right, we got ourselves a nice tie-up situation here. Tatiana. Forehead to forehead. Kultsova Ooh, nice. versus Jones. Nice club here. Or a nice tie-up from these ladies. Oh, I love the train, the uh, leg trip there from Jones. However, looks like she is putting herself into a little bit of a dangerous spot here. Possibly a triangle attempt, but nope, 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 nope. She's okay. She has control of the uh, far side knee. Tatiana doing a really good job here of uh, keeping her posture broken down. Making her, making her put that pressure in to defend the triangle attempt. And she is going to go for it here. She's going to shoot that leg up. She has to get that hand outside. This is going to be tough to get without that hand outside. It's going to be more of a, just a, a, a squeeze and a crank. Jones is doing a great job of keeping that wrist, the hand control to stop the single isolation of that arm and allowing her to arm bar or, or, or triangle arm. I like the information that Jones's corner is giving to her. Again, clear and concise and we information. We have a guillotine here. This is really tight. Oh, never mind. It looked like she for a second had that elbow sunken in. It did look like it. She could go to a triangle attempt here with Jones's arm on the outside of that other leg. Hmm. Again, the cornering. That is just probably, you know, sometimes more than seeing good matches happen, I love to hear great coaching happening. And that is exactly what Jones is getting right now, getting some great coaching. It's very clear, uh, clear orders. I think if... Uh, I'd like to see Tatiana do here is actually try to break down the posture to get her to make a mistake. She's kind of... Jones is doing a great job of, of staying right in her face, not allowing her arms to get isolated, and Tatiana is just keeping her in guard here. And we've seen over and over again the top player has been the winner, has been the dominant point scorer in these matches. So if you're on bottom, I would, it'd be best, I feel like, to try and off-balance your opponent, try and get them to make a mistake, do something. Don't accept that you're just in guard attacking mm -hmm. because it looks like you're losing. Mm -hmm. I would agree, 100%. And, you know, Jones is just doing every bit, it doing every last step that her corner is asking for here. Definitely. Which is keeping her safe. You know, that's, that's really what it is here. Uh, she got herself a nice takedown. She got to a good position. You know, uh, she isn't really, she's found herself in maybe a couple almost bad positions, but since she's doing exactly what her corner's telling her to do to defend herself, you know, it's getting her to a safe space. And See, Tatiana keeps opening her guard, which is, is conducive towards Jones passing, but every time she opens her guard, Jones does not work to pass. She stays there. In this type of situation, when you have a bottom guard player doing what Tatiana does, the second that guard opens, you want to pass it. You want to do something. You don't want to stay there because she's comfortable there. You know? And here we go. As we, as we see that, Jones yep. finally starting to pass once the guard opened. Defending the guillotine attempt, she could continue to climb mount here and still defend it. She, it did look like she was about to lock up for a head and arm. I'm going to take a little bit. Team, but... A similar defense to my fight with Jack Della Maddalena is jumping your hips to the correct side to defend the guillotine. And what Jones needs to do here is get her hips to that left side. See, she did, okay, good, better than where she was. So it's harder to guillotine that person. Right in Jones's corner here. Getting all the cornering and the coaching she needs. Yes, and she does have control of the arm. However, I do, do think she's in, in Almost 20 seconds left of the match. I am thinking this is Jones's match to Again, give up. This coach is, is doing her job, making sure <laughs> that we are on top. Great coaching. I think this is Jones's match to lose. She's a dominant position. She's been in top the whole time. She's been patient and steady, finally finding the pass, and now staying in that position of the pass. Instead of making a risky attempt for a submission and losing it, she's being smart here. Like, we love submission attempts, but we are not the judges. 
And here we go to Ooh. almost a back take. She should, uh, and then she loses it. Very bad decision Jones for Jones to go right to guard here. You do not know how this is going to go now. Time. 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 It's all right. Yeah. Time. This match could go either way. I th would say Jones it seems she won the majority of the match being in top pressure, but at the end there, ending up on her back. We don't know how the judges are going to score this. Give it up for your winner by ref decision. Okay, Jones oh. gets the win. <laughs> Choosing to attack the way she did. Is and not next, right? It's the one after her. Yeah. is not this one, the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After that. No, no, two more. You got two more. Jones did a great job there, really uh, staying in a dominant attacking position, not giving up sweeps, not giving up submission attempts. Uh, I really think Tatiana got a little too comfortable in her guard and just accepted the position. And we've seen it over and over again. You don't want to stay in your mm -hmm. guard. You want to be on top. And I think in MMA that applies, honestly, in most situations you want to be on top unless you're hitting a submission. I agree. I 100% agree. Uh, you know, rather that be wrestling, judo, uh, most most of these martial arts sports, you want to be on top. You want to be the person that's being more active. Uh, anytime you are the reactive person, unless if that's your style and the judges kind of know that. Uh, but most times, jo judges are going to go in favor of, you know, the, the person that's being more active or the uh, person that's on top if it's a grappling art. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's that... That, that's what we think only wins. I think that's what the judging in most situations is looking at. Yeah. And in reality, yeah, I love jiu-jitsu from the bottom and winning ways like that, but right, top control, match. control time wins matches, Mason control time wins the fight, as well as damage, but. We got, up next, we got Juan Ramirez versus Jonathan Lopez. All right, we got Juan Ramirez back again. Some of these guys are getting three matches today. I love it. Yes. Really trying to get those feet wet. Juan Ramirez. Coming out right now. From Heeson Gracie. And representing 302. 302, Jonathan baby. Lopez. All right. And Jonathan Lopez is back. After a great performance earlier, defending a lot of submission attempts from a very good grappler and eventually getting caught. But he has come to redemption right now, and he's facing... Juan Ramirez for that redemption. Yeah, Juan Ramirez pulls guard. Whoa. So, ooh, yes. There we go, Lopez. I like that. I like that approach. Picks up the legs. You know, that's uh and that's something I would also like to put out towards uh towards some of our watchers uh, and competitors. You know, anytime you got somebody who wants to sit down and start playing that leg lock game, just pick up their legs. You take it away from them. Pick up their legs and walk around them or just, you know, throw them to one side and then the other. 50-50 here, a little scramble. So what, what, who goes for what? I think Juan Ramirez has been going for hooks every time, but John's been defending... So for the most part, pretty good. This could be yes, and he has one John going up there. for one right hey. now. I like that. I he's like got that. the knee line as well. Dang, he gets, gets it. the tap on oh, inside heel hook. John Lopez, very Where clean, very clean submission. Gets the With redemption 50, for earlier. Fifty-six seconds. There we go. One of those Jonathan very Lopez, nice. Great finish. Great heel hook there. Knew the knee line. He had it caught. See, a lot of times we've seen today guys had the knee line, did not jump on it quickly. He had that knee line, cinched it up immediately, did not give his opponent a chance to get out of there. Very good submission. And redeems his first loss against a very good grappler, I think. Honestly, he was defending submissions in that match as well. And you just get caught. You play the 50 50 sometimes, whoever gets it first. Yep. So. All right, next up, Great win for 302. MJMA, Amanda Holloway. Amanda Holloway. Oh, we are back with uh, Christina. Babola is going again, unless it's a different. No, she is back. She is not done. <laughs> she said, I am hungry. Everyone here is hungry today. Multiple matches. I love it. Representing 10th Planet PJJ, welcome back, Christina Pabola. All right, Amanda versus Christina Pabola of 10th Planet. Christina had a match earlier where she lost a close match to Becca Hurd, was attacking a lot. This is going to be, I think, a very similar style match. Yeah. 
And we get into the Kalata. And Manda is attacking here pretty aggressively. Now, there is a significant size difference here, which I think Amanda can use to her advantage if she's able to be quick with her movement and in and out. But see, we see Christina here using her strength and speed, getting right to side control, not wasting any time. And then she pulls guard again, goes right. She has a heel hook at the moment. Amanda has the heel hook now. Amanda has it, but she has the pressure on her chest. She's unable to extend the leg and get the finish. At the moment, she's close, though, and she has it. Christina has to smash in here and stop the momentum of this leg being extended, and she does. Good job. Good smash pass there. Christina in a dominant position now with Amanda trying to stop her pass and using that leg entanglement to keep her there. We have a 50-50 type position here. And Christina's looking to pull that foot out almost and gets but it out. Amanda just goes and attacks the, the uh, far side. Christina, I feel like she's fine with that, though. She's going to go outside here. She can get. Yeah. Oh, it, it seems like Christina's about to work her own leg lock attempt off to this and loses it. Both ladies going back and forth here with a leg lock attempts attacking. This is a very aggressive match. Amanda Holloway is. A Dangerous on the ground. I mean, it's been nonstop attempt after attempt with her. Uh, she loses one leg, she goes for the other, loses that position. Now goes she's going the for the neck. <laughs> and then the now the triangle. Now the triangle. It is chained. Amanda Holloway with chaining all these moves together. Very clean submission attempts, one to the other, as if it's nothing. And that is exactly what you want to do with your uh, with your jujitsu game or just your game period. You want to have one attack at okay, they defend that one, they got to worry about another one. I could not agree more. You know it, that works the same as uh, with your wrestling, your takedowns, and same with your submissions, and you know that even applies for your striking arts as well. Make sure you guys, if you're out here at the event, make sure you go get some food over here from uh, Papo's Bowl, Taco Bowls. I got one here just sent to me. It looks delicious. Nice I can't nice. eat it now, but I will at one point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and right back to the feet here. It's an aggressive match. Both this ladies want this win. This sides. is, yes. I love Amanda's movement. She is a spider monkey out there. She does not care. Wherever Stephanie goes, or sorry, Christina. Christina goes. Yeah. She is matching her. Sorry. Yeah. So Christi Christina, for a second there, thought to uh, sit and pull guard, but Amanda just stepped around immediately, and you know, and made her uh, second guess that uh, that thought. See, I'd like to see Amanda is already have this the, the height difference, right? In this kind of situation, I think it helps her to actually get lower in her stance instead of trying to match Christina's height. She should get lower and use that explosive wrestling that she's using a lot of to get these positions and dominant takedowns. Because I really like her movement. I think she's moving very explosively and quick. Well, she did. She did uh, drop down for a duck under earlier and uh, transition to a, a double, but uh, she ended up getting, I think, sprawled on, or the position the position didn't work out for her too well. And then yeah. that's when we saw her uh, start chaining together some of those submissions. So uh, even right, I, th I think she's just a little bit hesitant because of the size difference. Yeah. But you know, I think they were if they were a little bit closer in size, Amanda would have been all over with the wrestling. See, I, I, she's dominant all over. I like that though, David Goliath. You know, it's like we go with the heavyweight in the gym. Mm -hmm. You technically, in my opinion, have the ability to outspeed that person and mm -hmm. get them in bad positions where they cannot defend mm -hmm. as quickly or as good as. So I think Amanda's wrestling is on point. She's staying a little too tall in the feet. I think she got lower and forced Christina to get low with her. Boom, that takedown's there. Yeah. But, but I, I do it, like what she's doing here. Uh, almost like a calf crush yes. hold here, but I think Christina's going to smash past it because there's not enough to crank on it to get Christina to back off here. No, but I'm sure it's, it's not too comfortable for Christina here. See, what I'd like to see Christina do actually is sprawl, bring that Ooh. knee back out and sprawl it hard and then walk around. Because right now, this is just she's, Amanda's using this to stop Christina's forward pressure and attacking, and it's really stalemating her and making her stay in this exact kind of awkward guard position. With six, six seconds left, five seconds left, 
What a match. I wanted more time in this match, to be honest. I could watch these ladies go at it for another 10 minutes. So much energy. Great match. Amazing match. I would, I think, uh, I think Amanda got it here with all the aggressiveness that she showed. She really Give it up for your got the judges. Yes. Amanda Holloway with your win here by ref's decision. Very good match by both ladies. I think Amanda made a difference with her wrestling and her offensive pressure. I love it. Just I agree. always in her opponent's face, didn't care what her opponent had, had a defense for it, and then kept attacking. I agree. I 100% agree. Uh, I think if she had maybe just a couple more minutes, she might have might have been able to pull off that arm bar. Uh, definitely, if she had a, a little more size on her, she would have been able to force that thing. But shout out to you, Amanda. Technically, you the GOAT. You the GOAT, girl. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Greatest of the night. Especially with the size difference. I love that. I love that. 100%. <laughs> Norris. 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 You got some music playing. I hope you guys can hear it. We're jamming right now. Again, if you were just joining us, Basil Hafez, joined alongside by my friend A.T. McCown, here at the Place of Peace Invitational, watching some amazing jiu-jitsu. All right. Got ourselves some purple belts here. Purple belts, Kyle Smith of Crush Crew against. Is Kyle Hughes here? No. Is he on the thing? I don't see him once on here. I see Kyle Myers. That's not Hughes. <laughs> All right. Yes. Not yet. Got to wait your turn. All right. And here we go with a purple belt match. Excited for this one. Okay, right to the takedown attempt. Ooh. Not oh. wasting any time. But, okay. But with the throw, again, guys, you know, uh, it definitely would behoove you to add some judo to your game. Uh, as we saw, we just had a, a good uh, a good double leg attempt there. But the counter to that judo throw. But we are trying to use that shoulder crush to... Uh, All right, yep. and then yep. Norris here from Vault has got a good guard. Yep. Yep. And we see Kyle Smith of Crush Crew here trying to pass. Okay, here he's very patient. I see, I don't know if I like the gi pants for a no gi match. Uh, I feel like it gives him so much more friction. Yes, it does, but if uh, leg locks are your game, that could could work in your favor. I don't know. I haven't seen him really fall for a leg lock yet. Yeah, good point. But you're right, 100%. If you are a leg lock game, that could help you 100% to, with the friction. It looks like I got hit in the, yep. the boys. Okay. Got a low blow there. Sorry about that. I definitely know that pain. Mm -hmm. Most men do. Yep. Give him a second to get his breath. Um, I like it, like I said, the, so you're right. If he's going for leg locks, it's going to be great to wear those gi pants. If he's getting leg locked, he is yeah, not yeah. in a good spot. Not at all. <laughs> all right, and right back to the action. Didn't need much time here. A couple breaths, and he's good to go. Kyle with a really good pressure here. But I think if Norris could elevate him here like that, got the leg, there we go, and now he can attack that. He got both attacking it. Oh, and he get is that Kyle Smith with the tap? Who's the tap? Honestly, I think it was Kyle Smith. I cannot see. We'll find out in a second. <laughs> yeah, because they were both going for it. They were both going for the same thing. It was the other way. Oh, okay. So give it up for your winner. Norris. Norris. What a close see these 50-50 entanglements. Sometimes you cannot tell who taps if you're not seeing the right angle, because it's like both they both look like they have it on. Great finish by Norris from Vault. Um Kyle Smith, brother, don't wear gi pants in no gi. <laughs> yeah. Someone tell him, don't wear gi That's so, so hard to get out of a leg lock with that. Fresh but, start, Valley Tudo shorts. Valley Tudo shorts. Uh, straight spats, anything other than gi pants. But great match regardless. Board shorts, those, those work as well. Oh, Sam De La Hiva back out here. Okay, Sam De La Hiva. Sam De La Hiva is fighting against, I don't see here. Sam. Bear with Heather. us, guys. <laughs> uh, 
bear with us there, guys. Sometimes the names on the paper that we have doesn't always match up, but this is something that we are getting better at. <laughs> Either way, we have awesome jiu-jitsu for you on the screen, so you can always see that. All right. Sam De La Hiva here against... Uh, Sam Heather, I believe. Sam Heather. Heather. Sam Heather. Heather. Gotcha. Okay. Sam Muller. Mueller. Mueller. Sam Mueller. My apologies, Sam. If your fans are watching this, I... So Sam Mueller versus Sam De La Hiva. We got two Sams here. Who is yep. the better Sam? Let's find out. <laughs> De La Hiva. Going hard against Mueller here. See, she could actually take her to the mat with mm. a with a butterfly sweep here towards the left, but she's but accepting on her side. Slice. Yeah, very good knee slice by that, Sam Mueller. Ooh, oh, almost into crucifix position, but Sam Dell he was able to uh, find her way back to the half guard position. Mueller is looking for that knee. She could knee slice right there again because of the space created by Sam. She's not really locking it tight to stop that knee shield pass. Looks like um, Sam Mueller doing a real good job of standing, staying on top here. Yeah, Sam could push that right knee down and slide right through here. As we mm -hmm. see, she's trying for it. De La Hiva is doing a good job of not letting her and elevating when she does it. Looks like Sam De La Hiva has a lockdown on that, that leg. Yep, yes, and she, she does. could follow through here, and she ends up Ooh. on top. Very good. Controlled by Sam De La Hiva. And what she nice did, sweep. I feel like what she did there was she waited for Sam Mueller to really try and elevate to get the knee sliced through. And as soon as she did, boom, use the sweep there, to drive your opponent over. And now Sam is looking for her own knee slice pass as well. De La Hiva. And Sam Mueller passed. is holding onto the ankle there is not a good idea. I don't think that's enough to stop the pass. No, the ankle's already out. The heel's already out. So and boom. it is out. Oh, Sam De La Hiva with the buggy, possibly? Yeah. Nope. Uh, Sam Mueller on the bottom. I'm sorry. Trying to okay, get something going here. North-South for Sam De La Hiva. It looks like she's looking for the North-South choke right now. She has it locked up with her hands. She oh, has the grip. Darce. It looks like, oh, is this a De La Hiva, now? De La Hiva with a darts on top. Uh, I think she needs to get Sam Mueller's If she can drop her weight here, she has across. it. If she drops her weight, if she can bring her legs out a little more and drop that weight, she has a submission here. If she can get on top of uh, Sam Mueller's tricep, that would definitely help her get this finish a lot easier because that's uh, you want that shoulder crushing down into the uh, the carotid artery, and that's what's going to help her get that finish. If she Ooh, can drop you her, hear chest her screaming. Here. She's dropping it a little more. She has to sprawl her legs out to get more flat pressure and is she you hear she's walking up Mueller's face is getting bright red here she that De La Hiva's current pressure must be uh, pretty heavy uh, but she finds her way out what Sam, job. what Sam De La Hiva needed to do there was sprawl her legs out and drop her chest pressure right on Sam Mueller she would have had to finish I think she was looking to curl the legs and walk around which gave Sam the opening to now end up in this little turtle position we are in right now. Very good attempt, though. Almost had the Darce by Sam De La Hiva. Attacking now in side control. Oops. Sam Muller throwing up stuff from the bottom. I'd like to see Sam Muller try and throw in a shrimp to get out here instead of just throwing up that entanglement. Sam De La Hiva's going to just shrug it off each time here. And I would also like to see her turn into her opponent. Again, turning away from your opponent only allows them to attack you. I mean, yes, if you are going to give up your back for uh, for the attempt to scramble back up to your feet, you need to be quick with it. Um, if you are and taking your time, it's only going to lead you to an inevitable position like what De La Hiva is putting on her right now. Yeah, prime example, I think, of what, uh, Triangle. what AD is talking about, Aaron. We see this finish about to happen. Arm bar there we go attack. with the finish. Sam De La Hiva with the finish in her second match of the day against Sam Muller. 
And I think what HT was mentioning is really a key point there. When you turn the opposite way away from your opponent, you're really giving them to, you're giving the opportunity to, for them to end up here, where she ended up driving her forward, taking the back, and then getting that armbar triangle submission. If she would have turned and shrimped towards her, she would have been able to really get a better angle. Yes. That would be a great point there by ATT for sure. Which ended up in the submission position, really, mm -hmm. because of that. Five minutes, all right. Good match. All right. Great match. And we are up with Will Dill. Michael David Payne. Let's go. All right. We are here with Will Dill from Martinez BJJ facing Michael David Haynes Mahler. That is a long name from 1908. That is now, the longest name I think I've ever said. Michael David Haynes Mahler. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if you know, but is Will the younger brother of Anthony? Will, or is, older? Will, Will is the older brother older of Anthony. Brother. Yes, yes, he is. Uh, let's see. Now, Anthony Dill, uh, that is the homie. Uh, great sparring partner whenever we are cross training with the uh, guys over at LGOs. So, uh, met his mom at his last boxing bout. Super nice lady. She's did, awesome. Did, yeah, exactly. <laughs> did, didn't run into his brother though, but you know, similar tattoos, similar tattoo styles. And Sandy David. Let's go, let's go. I'm excited for this one, man. This is going to be a very technical match. I know uh, the Dill brothers very, very well. I would say that. This is going to be a fun one, and you don't want to look away, because little man is tough. <laughs> We're waiting for his opponent right now, uh, Michael David Haynes Muller. I feel like there should be more there. Michael David John Jacob Michael Haynes Muller. Uh, it's a long name. I'm excited to see what he ha what he does here. I know he's a great grappler as well from a good gym. It's going to be a very exciting matchup. Again, this is Basil Hafez. If you're just joining us, I joined alongside my friend ATT McCallan. We are here at the Place of Peace Invitational. Folks, if you'd also like some shorts from the Place of Peace, we do have the merchandise table in the back of the room. See a lot of our competitors today wearing the Place of Peace rash guards and shorts. Go check out the new kits. We got the Save by the Bell kit. Looking pretty good. Check it out. Still waiting for his opponent. He should be coming out very soon. And now a lot, of, a lot of times, I see this is one of those times we don't have uh, a grappler versus straight grappler. I don't know Michael Mahler's background. I think he's mainly jiu-jitsu. I, I know Will Dill is an MMA fighter and also is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. This is going to be a clash of styles of a grappler jiu-jitsu based versus a fighter grappling based. So I'm excited to see what happens here. Sorry for the little intermission we have here, folks. I guess we are waiting in here. Is his opponent he just came out. Of course, rocking the place of peace. Respect to that. All right. And we're getting started here today with this great match. Will Dill of Martinez BJJ facing Michael David Haynes Mahler of 1908. Very interesting style here for Will Dill to come out on his knees already. Very low. Good stance. Very good stance from Will Dill. Nice low wrestling stance. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if you see a little crap talking here, a you know, little shit talking. None of these guys like to uh, have a little fun. See. Oh, yeah, and I think that's why. Good base by Will Dill there to control that, come back. Will Dill cornered by Anthony Dill, his brother. Very technical match right now. Sitting in this position here. What I'd like to see Will Dill do is be able to get his hands on the stomach area. A lot of guys like to go underneath, and I, I understand this for, for more controlling the posture, but to break the guard, the best option is really to push off those hips 
because it is also hard to armbar you when you have your elbows so high up and your mm -hmm. hands pushing on the hips, gives mm -hmm. you a good spot to start from. And we got Michael. Michael's doing a great job of controlling this guard and keeping it very simple right now. Controlling the shoulders very well, keeping the hips back. And Little Man is using that post right there to keep his weight pressure into Michael Muller. I'd like to see him use the ball of his feet there. He's already okay and he's passed one leg already. Halfway. Settles in half guard here. As Michael's looking for coaching advice, trying to understand what his coaches are saying. It's hard from his angle, maybe. Looks he's like shrimping here. It would definitely benefit Will to get that one on one on that far side hand or that arm that's uh, posting, but uh, Michael, lost position. Michael using that post very good on the side of the face there. Mm -hmm. Very aggressive. See, it seems like Will's allowing him to do that right now, I'm trying to bait him to do something. Michael's doing a great job of not getting overexcited, just using the post and not reaching, overreaching for it. And now he's looking for the triangle setup here as Will stuffs that Ooh, ankle. Plata. And he's got an omoplata here. This omoplata position Will can use to roll through. Okay, he's back to guard. And Mike's going to use that to wrestle up. And now we are back in the same position here to start with. That was a nice transition. Very or, nice uh, transition. Or, or, or a very nice sequence there, I should say. I'm Michael sorry. going for that omoplata. Very clean and how he almost got it, the position, but then went back to guard and not, did not lose where he was at. Mike doing a good job with that frame, using that to get himself to a better position. Uh, See, Mike. Uh, Will, Will's doing a great job of pressuring, but he has to get a little more active with his offense. Being in this spot right here is not enough to win the match, if we have already have seen that throughout the day. Will's going to have to do a little bit more jiu-jitsu and mm -hmm. get past the guard here. Uh, and really work those attempts because as of now, Michael's the only one I've seen with the submission attempt, and he's trying to work other stuff, even though it's only been one attempt. Gives him the advantage. Keep the squeeze, Mike. Keep the squeeze. Keep that pressure. Keep that pressure. Elbow down, Mike. I like, I like how Mike is using his elbow to uh, try to help help himself get into a better position or or, or finish the submission. I, and he's he's using every every uh, quote unquote dirty move uh, <laughs> that's technically legal in jujitsu, and hey, I am loving it. Hey, there are no dirty moves. If you can hit it, it's not dirty. <laughs> yes, I, and I am loving it. The uh, elbow and see your opponent's jawline I mean, to I, discourage them or help encourage them move their head where you want it. The uh, the hand pressing into the ear or the side of the face, you know, all of that stuff is legal. But a lot of us are so used to rolling with our friends at the gym we don't do those moves um you know mike is doing a real good job i mean i couldn't agree more with mike's approach here i think uh, that post is so helpful and using those you would call it like you know being a bad training partner but it really it's very usable and practical in real life situations and mm -hmm. in these live situations and we've seen michael use it the whole match oh he's used that shield and he gets into a down. leg Ooh, entanglement what? past the knee line and that is time Definitely not a long enough match to really see the no. jitsu start, but Michael did a great job of really nullifying Will's game here, and I would say Michael yeah, got it off of these submission attempts. But, but I do like these short, intimate uh, matches where you know people are going for going for the submission just a little bit, a uh, little bit more. Yeah. You know, trying to be a little more aggressive yeah. instead of trying to conserve energy and you know stall for time or anything like that or make it to overtime. No, we have. Have five minutes on the clock, rather you're getting it or we, we're moving on. And I mean, that's a prime example as well. If we see someone who's on top the whole time doesn't actually win the match, the first mm -hmm. time we've seen that, well, what's the reason why? I mean, Will Constant didn't go attacks. for as many attempts, he had no mm -hmm. attacks, but more mm -hmm. he stayed pressure heavy, which is great for a fight. But even though Michael was just kept throwing submission attempts, 
it gets him it gets more attacking it's more offense oh i like to choke him on <laughs> let's go this is gonna be a fun one here this is going to be a good one. We have Joe Scats of Team Balance, cornered by Ricardo Miglaris against Pisces Tan of Vault. I have rolled with both gentlemen. Both are great grapplers. Pisces Tan is a beast, okay? He's a beast. He's a military veteran and been rolling for a while. I've been training with him before. He's very tough to deal with. Scats with a place of peace dope rash guard. I like it. Again, very unique. Let's see what happens here. Scats putting pressure, putting Pisces on his back. Pisces has been here before, is comfortable in these positions. He's very strong upper body, and good control of posture. He does a good job of doing that. Right here, he's using a. Is a barem? No, is this a rubber guard attempt in a way, but. It's still a rubber guard. It's still almost a rubber guard. And he goes for the leg. Now he has the leg. And he's got to lock it up here. He can, he can lock it up and make an attempt here for the submission. Get out of that, Scats. Get out of that. What Scats has to do is sit his butt in the air and walk his butt around from the heel hook. No, never mind anymore. Here we're here. Pisces Tan in side control, dominant position. And going, starting to set up for some arm attacks here. Using that cross. Get that cross face to really control that side control. And Tan is doing a good job here of driving the shoulder in, trying to make Joe Scats make a mistake. He's got right to mount, and now he's got the Americana. He's going to look for the Americana. He slides right back to side control. And Scats defends it. And now we are looking at an arm bar tent almost. The way that Tan just floats from, trend, uh, from position to position. You know, you can he, tell he's been doing it for a oh while. Yes, you can definitely tell. He it, Scats. This is a man with a lot of experience. Even the control right here, to be able to, no matter where Scats is rolling, he's following him and he's following him in a and, dominant way. Yeah, and just floats from one position to the next. And Keep turning, Scats, turn! It, it, it's just turn. So, it is so beautiful to see. Turn, Scats, turn! Pisces has the back right now, looking for a rear naked choke with Check still control. Neck. What Scats would want to do here is to try and scoot away and turn into him. Turn, turn, Scats. We have oh, almost a Pisces. crucifix. Yeah. We have a crucifix position now with Pisces in control. Going to the turtle. See, Scats could come out on top here if he were to back Scats, out back, a little back, bit. Scats. He's got to go out the back Push. door. He's got to go out the back. He's nice staying there. Got to a out triangle. The back. That. Then a triangle here from Tan. And back to guard. Going, stay heavy. And we constantly see Pisces going for that rubber guard type of submission attempt. You got a Scats breathe. Using Scats, actually, he's backing him up with that each time, which is good. He's making him respect the position and not be able to just drive all the way in. Pisces Tan. Oh, Pisces so with the leg attempt here. He's going for the leg lock. He's got the toe, toe hold. He's, and Scott's Joe is defending it at the moment. Now he goes to a knee bar and he switches. Scott's he almost has it. He could get the knee bar here if he just goes for it. I think he can get it. Scott, push him! See, Pisces' angle here is a little off, which is stopping him from getting yep. the knee bar, but he could. Yep. He could go. He could switch heel hook here as well. Take the back, Scats. Take the back. Back to the again. toe hold, and he gets the toe hold. From submission to submission for Pisces Tan, non-stop attacking, non -stop. finds the one he wants and gets it. What a submission finish. Give it up for your winner by toe hold, Pisces Tan. Great win by Pisces Tan. Great finish. That was a good match, very good match. Pice Tan always, always attacking and getting the submission. He is a beast. I've trained with Pisces before. Very tough, very tough ground. Looks like it. Yes. The way he just flows from position to position and from submission to submission, that is beautiful to see. And representing Martinez BJJ, Brian Bohannon.
All right. Next match, we have Devin Riley of Crazy88 facing Brian Bohannon of Martinez BJJ. This is going to be a, a no-gi match. All right. As we get underway here, referee Des McDonald starts the action. Immediately to the ground. Right into that open half guard there. Mm. And Devin is looking for, it looks like he's using that knee shield good from underneath. He's trying to elevate him, which he does go oh. right for the leg off of it. He, he has him. the position he could actually Oh, wow, well, great defense there for Brian Bohannon to collect his own leg. Stop the heel hook attempt oh, from continuing. What? They are tied up right now. Pretty good, though. There, this is so much. This is a lot to, <laughs> to the, the, download. This, yeah, you don't know. Where is this going? And we see it. We go back on top. Good defense. Oh, there we go. We're, we're back to uh, a nice half guard here. Brian is doing a good job now of actually controlling that inner ankle to stop uh, Devin, Devin, Riley. Devin Riley from coming in and going inverted. Oh, man. But that was that was one heck of a leg entanglement they had there. Yeah, they almost hit each other. You don't know who was going for it at that point. Yeah, it was like, are you, are you leg locking yourself there, sir? <laughs> I'm, I'm so confused. But, you know, smart move. Uh, you know, if you, you are holding on to your ankle, your opponent can't. <laughs> the one thing I like that Devin Riley is doing a good job of is, is every time that it's in this position right here, he's bringing that, the toes of his foot and he's placing it on that hamstring to place it, you know, get leverage and push off. Okay, and we have, he's got the leg, but he's sacrificing his top position for that leg. Ends up back to where we started here almost. Maybe you'll see it again. Devin Riley doing a good job. Every time that top foot, he comes right back to the top of that hamstring or that thigh. He places it right there so Brian cannot progress past that half guard. Very slick of him to do that. Very nice, Devin Riley. I like that. I think I might borrow that move from him. And the thing I can notice that he's doing from there is now he's going and he's hinging that foot to get a knee shield. But Brian doing a great job here of throwing it past and then getting trying to get inside there. This is a very good guard from Devin Riley. Devin attacking for the leg, almost, and comes up with it. Back to his guard. I like what I'm seeing. De this is very nice. This is good jujitsu here. Devin knows what he wants. He wants that leg. I think it's pretty obvious, and he's trying to find a way to make it happen. He really wants to catch that heel hook, and I feel like a lot of the things he's doing is to get that because he's baiting with the arms and back to the leg. He's baiting with the triangle, back to the leg. I appreciate the dedication towards leg locks that you leg lock guys have. <laughs> It's just like you will, you guys will give up everything in the world just to hold on to somebody's leg. Which back control here for Devin Riley as we say that. Very smart because I think what he's been doing a lot of is attacking the legs, which forces your opponent to then give up something else, right? And as you stay greedy, you stay with that, but he's using it to get other moves, and now he's in a dominant back control. Yep, just as I was talking trash. Sorry, he, he I, does, I'll take it back. He <laughs> doesn't have the body triangle yet, but he's trying to get it. What I'd like to see Brian do here is try and turn in, face him a little more when he's, because there's a lot of space there in that open try, that body triangle area. And as I say that, he starts to tighten it up a little more. Dan, there, he, there you go. There he has the body lock full, and switches it. Almost full body triangle in there. I mean, Devin and is just doing is a, in. Devin is just doing a great, a fantastic job on all the chords. Yeah, he is. Every time that his opponent Brian is switching sides to respond to his body triangle, he is switching it at the same time and responding so he doesn't get leg locked from the back, which can happen. Very slick. 
for Devin Riley. Now he's got a very good body triangle with the foot very far behind Brian. Very hard to escape this position. Easier to turn in, but hard to escape. We have 20 seconds left. Oh, gets the arm across, trying to work the hand underneath the neck. He's going for the finish here. He wants that yep. finish before the time runs out. Seconds. 10 as well. seconds. He is pushing for it. Five seconds left. It looks like Brian Bohannon is going to be able to outlast the time and show his toughness here. Very good technical match by both men. But Devin Riley showing his skill in that match. Very dominant. Give it up for your winner by rest decision, Devin Riley. Great win by Devin Riley. Attacking the legs in all kinds of ways, baiting with different attacks to get his opponent to give him the legs and then to go right to the back from all that. I love it. I love it. What a match, man. That was non-stop, non-stop yeah, that was a very good match. And more matches like that, I'm happy. Okay, and now we reach the last special match of the day. We have Nick Famosa representing Balance Studios with Ricardo Miglaris in his corner against Trevor Charles of Essential BJJ. And representing Essential BJJ, Trevor Charles. Let's see what happens here. Both of you gentlemen have been training for a long time. I know Nick has been training for a long time at Balance Studios with us, doing no gi, gi, everything. Good to see you, Nick. Excited for this one. It's going to be, I would say, a more technical match than what you would expect, for sure. And Nick rocking the Place of Peace shorts. I love it. Eight minutes. There we go. Five minutes. Oh, eight minutes. Eight minutes. There we go. Eight minutes. Five minutes at first. That's not enough. <laughs> and you see Nick style already, letting his opponent run around a little bit, a little showboating, and trying to say, just come at me. Just come at me. <laughs> come on, Nick. I like the VHTS, I will say. That is a nice setup. That's what opponent has. <laughs> Trevor looking to get the hand fight going in his favor. Using a lot of clubbing, as we talked about earlier, fighting words, fighting actions. Oh, yeah. But Nick taking it. I see here. that a lot, usually coming from wrestlers. Uh, they want to control the, uh, the posture and which direction the head's going. Uh, if, you can, if you can get the head going in one direction, shoulders will follow, which also means the hips will probably be exactly where you want them uh, as you kind of shuck those two uh, across. Uh, doing a real good job here. Trevor with the top, uh, the uh, top control, and the half guard, using that forehead, getting underneath the chin. Real good job. Even using that foot to break open the guard here, so he can get his knee pass. Trevor doing a good job of taking his time here, not rushing, not trying to force anything, just slowly breaking the pass the guard. Yep. And another thing I would like to see Trevor do is get his foot flat to the mat, get his knee up in the air, and as you bring your foot a little bit closer, your knee Nick. naturally just kind of slides uh, slides out of place or it uh, breaks open their guard, one of the two. See, Nick could, Nick could look for one of those uh, little slick knee bar setups from bottom here if he's able to. I think it's what he's using to get the... Uh, to get the sweep here. If he could come up right now, he could have the sweep. But he banana chooses split. to go back to banana split. Banana split. He's going, trying to go out the back door banana now. Split. He's going out the back door to try and come up top here. Is I he see. actually going to get it? I, I don't know if he has the banana split. I see him trying. I don't think so. He's got to get more separation between the hips there, I feel like. And he ends up on top, and he goes right to pass. And he settles in half guard. Here we are with Nick Mimosa on top and Trevor Charles defending. Someone's alarm going off. It's a very aggressive alarm. I would not want to wake up to that. Me neither. <laughs> Give me some birds chirping, a nah. little bit of snow allegra or something. <laughs> Coffee being made, something other than that. <laughs> Nick taking his time here, looking for a way to get past. I think he could find the knee slice pass here if he were to look for it. Trevor doing a good job of kind of being flat. 
to not give up either side. Got five minutes, Nick. I think Nick just trying to apply some pressure here. Uh, but we need to create a little bit of movement. So Trevor doing a real good job of using that frame to He's, discourage uh, Nick from just kind of staying in this position. He's doing a good job, too, there of intertwining the bottom leg, even mm -hmm. though I think Nick could break past it. It's always that thing that slows you down a little more than you want to. 430, Nick. Trevor's not letting him just pass. He's saying, you know, you're going to stay here, you're going to earn that. I'd like to see Nick push that right knee and go knee slice. Because of the leverage, I think he could push that right knee and go right to the knee slice instead of staying with the upper body control. Mm -hmm. As we say that, collects the knee, looking for it. <laughs> Not familiar, as it's almost like a... Four minutes, Nick. A cradle position, Very but to a cradle, but not not quite he, he with the far around. side. Very nice step around there. North south. Ooh, come he's on. He's got to hold this position and not let him lose. There you go, and he holds it. Trevor doing a good job of scrambling. He scrambles up and he gets back to his feet, out of the position here. Now we have three and a half minutes almost left to see what happens in this match. For a second there, I thought I was going to get the, that. Uh, Reverse or inverted. Uh, it looked like it a little bit. Hey, I was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Shout out to Trevor and all the hours of tattooing he has. Oh, yeah, Nick has got a lot of tattoos for it, sure. On, I'm sure that man is logged in with hours. No longer buy tattoos, hours. At the t so at this moment, I feel like I know we're about, we're a little more than halfway through, but I feel like uh, Nick is winning based off of the current ground time they had. I would mm -hmm. say he was in more control. Trevor could take this at any point, though. Trevor, Trevor could pull guard and attack a leg, and it's now his match to take. Or work at a takedown. And off the mat they go. Back to center. The referee Des McDonald bring him back. Trying to get some energy going again with this crowd. Both men jostling here, trying to find underhooks. A little tired here as well. Nick, 2.30, switch up the game. Nick taking some uh, some deep breaths here. Trevor kind of realized it, got on him immediately. Heavy collar tie here, pull him down right here in front of us. Both men are doing a good job with hand fighting here, but uh, I mm -hmm. mentioned it again already today. I, mm -hmm. I think we need to we need to get lower than your opponent to be able to get the leverage to control them. And just as you say that, Trevor starts doing it. There we go. A couple collar ties there, a couple snap downs on the head. See, this is where I like to Nick, see Trevor is pushing the, he's pushing the pace and he's mm -hmm. bringing it to Nick. Mm -hmm. When both guys are in this close match where it could almost be a stalemate, you want to see one guy say, F it, I'm going for it, yep. I'm going forward. Nick is doing, or sorry, Trevor is doing that right now. And Nick needs to change the tide, otherwise this could turn around and end up being Trevor's match. I would like to see uh, Trevor use that snap down and uh, transition to a double leg underneath of that so snap down snap down and as he pops that last one drop down for a double i feel like he he will get that especially against uh with the uh body posture nick is given at the current moment i feel like that is a takedown that would uh be a little easier to get than this uh this trip he's going for definitely definitely even at this point i think if either guy pulled guard to try and get some attacks mm -hmm. it wouldn't be a top game mm -hmm. because it's really close and there hasn't been enough jujitsu from both well, Nick, men. You got one minute. It's been more of the wrestling and the grappling that's going to make a difference here. Let's see. We got some. Both using the forearm post. Under a minute left. With a. Uh, Go for it. Close match here with Nick Mosa from Balance Studios and Trevor Charles from Essential BJJ. This match could go either way Ooh, right now, but we see Trevor out. starting to turn it up, looking for the takedown. This is what we like to see. Someone who wants the, he, what they want their hand raised. They want you that win. You have to show us you want that win. Show Push, the judges dude. you want it. Push. Very good pushing here by and Trevor. He's trying. 
and a, another fun fact for uh, our new competitors out there, and even our experienced ones. Uh, if you guys are super explosive for the first minute and the very last minute of uh, any round, it looks really good on the judges' cards. So if you you have one minute left, hear, hear that as, hey, you got one minute to blow your load. You get a one minute to rest after that. Or if it's a jujitsu match, Five. that last minute, just go hard. Just go hard. Yeah, Risk I, it all. I couldn't agree more with that. I think uh, I think Trevor Five. might have stole this match based off of his aggressiveness in the very end, even though Nick was in a dominant position when they did grapple. Or it might be a draw. The, the, the judges might see a draw just because yeah. there has been a lack of jujitsu, more of a wrestling, and this is not a wrestling match. Yeah. I think we have a draw. Yeah, yeah and uh, about, maybe they will go with a sudden death or something. I'm not sure. In the sport of Lethway, if there is no, for your winner, we have a winner by a rest decision, Trevor Charles. And Trevor, Trevor Charles wins it. What Shout I thought, Trevor. what I thought, and what uh, what ATT mentioned when you turn it up at the end in a match that's very close, whether it's been boring or whether it's been just even, straight dead even. You turn it up at the beginning or the end. You should. It just gives the judges the little bit of oomph. Mm -hmm. You have to give them that little bit of oomph to say, eh, okay, he gets it. Yes, I agree. Um, and. Uh, I forgot where I was going to go there, but yeah, definitely that uh, that first and that last minute uh, will do a huge thing in the uh, the judges' eyes, uh, especially if you know that last thirty seconds you are on top in a dominant position. Heck yeah! Not the most exciting match we want to see, but it's a match nonetheless, and we're moving on to better ones. It's still a match where we can learn a lot there. Yes. And honestly, and that's what. House, Jessica and honestly, that's what I would advise uh, a lot of my jiu-jitsu practitioners out there, as well as my MMA guys. Uh, you know, watch your sport. Uh, don't just watch the fights to watch them. Watch them to study them and see what habits you know that uh, that the athletes are making and how the other person is able to capitalize off of those mistakes and you know how you could apply that to your game. Like in that same match, I think if Nick would have been able to, mm -hmm. instead of letting him keep standing up uh, from that time, he stay on top a little bit, you mm -hmm. know, try and attack. But still a great match by both guys. Kick yeah. Very technical. Ooh. Not much points scored, but we're on to the next one. No, you dog. Please. All right. We are here with... Hmm. And we got a, a guard pool here. Ansley Cox from Heart BJJ and mm -hmm. Jessica Scanapico from Tap House. Ansley and Jessica. Ansley is doing a good job on top here, mm -hmm. attacking that head and arm. Yes. She's trying. She's looking for it. She I like the tucked. gift wrap that she has here. She can use that gift yes, wrap to can. get the head and arm, but I think she's she content could, with going to side control, maybe. She could also use that uh, that gift wrap to... Uh, uh, it's a choke that I'm thinking of, but I, I lost the name of it. I was looking at you, waiting to see what you are going to show me. I'm like, uh... <laughs> uh here we go. I could just do it on... Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, that shit sucks. <laughs> she could do that. I think it's tougher to hit those kind of submissions in these kind of matches because I feel like if she goes for that, then well, Jessica would be able to start scrambling and then you lose the knuckle position. What, what ATT was showing me is the same position that she has the gift wrap in, but adding the knuckle, putting the knuckle in there and shoving it in the throat, which really kind of is a choke it really is a choke and you can use it a lot in tournaments i feel like it's tougher because when the person scrambles you lose that fist positioning in a way mm -hmm. but still very doable even here very yeah, doable. Yeah. She's she has well she could post her left elbow on the ground start forcing that knuckle in right underneath of uh that tricep right there and boom now she has a submission even she could stay mounted i think and just pressure with it because it's like you know very dominant position mm -hmm. Ooh, well, as we say that again. right to the back yep Right to the back, but you you know exactly what position I'm going to ask for. <laughs> Reverse triangle. 
Ansley is attacking busy here, keeping busy the whole match. Now she's looking to flatten. Drop those hips in. She needs to drop those hips in a little bit more. It looks like she's trying to turn her, but uh, there's no point of turning her here. Uh, just drive those hips into uh, into the floor. She looks to bring her to a side. She thinks she has the position the of the choke. choke. She's trying to. She's behind the head. Oh, Very close. The head. I agree, though. I think the better option would be to flatten out here mm -hmm. to get the positioning so you could stick your hand in there, get space, and mm -hmm. then you can roll to the side when you have the choke. When she rolled to the side right away, you let her know that yeah, she's going for this. Uh, there you go. Hint, and dang, she, she gets the tap. From the back position, good attack there. Good Very job, good finish Ansley. by Ansley Cox of Hart BJJ. Give it up for your winner by submission. Shout Ansley out to Tim Hart. Cox. Yep. Congrats, Ansley. Beautiful attacking the whole time. Stayed busy and got the submission finish. Congratulations. And we're in place of peace. Got to represent. All right. Someone better hit a reverse triangle here for AT to be upset. Yes. <laughs> Let me start throwing some fruit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, Kaya J, let's go. Let's go. She looks serious, like she's oh. gonna beat somebody up. Oh yes. All right, Kaya J of Tenth Planet BJJ taking on Nicole Matthew of Method Jiu Jitsu. This is gonna be a good one, guys. I know it will be. I'm guessing, but I know it will be. Tune in here, guys. It's gonna be a great match. A lot of technique here. Two explosive women representing great schools here. We started off. All right, Kaya Jackson with the underhook. Or oh, nice pummel position, trying to get to the double unders. Both women looking very explosive here, very quick. I feel like we're gonna end up in the in a position in the matter of a drop of a hat. Yeah. Oh, Kaya J trying to use that attempt. inside leg trip. She's using that guillotine, good control to stop her. Yes. She could go Darcy here. Oh, never mind. Nicole doing a good job of slowing her down here. Ooh, tries. tries to go. Yep, she has to go for a, a kind of lat drop -ish Almost a, a lat drop, but just accepted the guard in a way. But I think mm -hmm. it was mainly she got defense because Kaya J was you know centered. Her weight was in the middle. I think uh, Nicole realized that she wasn't going to get that lat drop the way she fell. Yeah, Kaya has a. Uh, uh, a little bit of a wrestling background, I believe. Uh, so she's going to have real good hips. Real good control of her hips, at least. Kaya J posturing very well here, making it tough for Nicole to build up anything she wants here. Nicole looking for that arm to isolate, possibly. Mm. And back out here. I like how she's pulling on the head here. Uh, pulling on the head, just kind of pressing the knees in, which can sometimes open, uh, persuade your opponent to open their guard. Uh, it's a, uh, a catch wrestling uh, pa kind of a crush pass. Catch is catch. Mm. Nicole, nice body lock. Nice body lock here. Uh, two, and a, two and a half or two minutes and 50 seconds working with. I'm trying to tie up the arm here. Possibly work an arm bar or something. Seems like Nicole was really trying to control Kaya's posture. She's mainly looking for that, maybe for a triangle or for a butterfly sweep of some kind. But she is really heavy on controlling the posture, whether she's grabbing that arm and sucking it into her. Everything seems like it's posture based. She's trying to keep Kaya from building up, and building up on what she wants to do. Maybe work a pass. But Kaya could step over here and she actually does that. Kaya could get the pass because Nicole's open guard and right to half guard. Oh, uh, now this position, Kaya needs to control the upper body, bring her hips in as she goes, and she has the rear naked for a second here without back control. 
She's got to continue to go to her left here, and she could actually end up with the back control, but if she lets Nicole bring her back, now she's back into her side control. Not as easy to get the submission from there. A minute and 30 on the clock. Kaya doing a good job here. She lost the position, though. I think she just wants to sacrifice to get up here. As she does that, Nicole is looking for control, takes the back. One hook in for Nicole. Kaya defending here. One minute left. This could switch very easily, as it might have looked like Kaya in the beginning, but Nicole attacking a lot right now. And that uh, that sacrificial get up, that's something that you see a lot of wrestlers going for, especially these days. Um, with the, it works for so many so many guys with a wrestling back background. Uh, I believe uh, Islam used it as well. Islam Makachev, who's uh, the 155 champion UFC, uh, the 145 champion uh, Volkanovski, he uses it a lot. Um, I'm pretty sure, actually, uh, I'm pretty sure we've seen uh, DC use it a lot back in his day uh, DC as, well. as well. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So DC is another another famous wrestler who does not mind giving up his back because he's just going to get up, control your arm, and usually probably turn around with uh, overhand left or overhand right, depending on which way he's going. See, in my in my opinion, the, what Nicole is doing is great for stabilizing and slowing down Kaya, but. In terms of winning the match, uh, there's not a submission to no. be by the triangle on the body. So in reality, it's just kind of stalling. Yep. See, I don't know. I think they might give that to Nicole because it was still jiu-jitsu positions, but Kaya was on top. Give it up for your winner by ref yep. decision. Nicole gets it. Oh. Nicole Matthew. Very good, uh, very good match by Nicole. Using yep. that body triangle to really just shut down Kaya and keep her stable. Not able to let Kaya work and build up and do what she wants to do. She can pass, can do anything. So, very good job by Nicole. Welcome to the stage. It's a great match. Robbie with a Y. Robbie with a Y. It's literally written like that. Just so you guys know, it's written like that. So, I'm going to read it off like that. Robbie with a Y versus Gio Vargas. Up next is our exciting match here. And representing Illuminati Graphic Club, Gio Vargas. Uh, Robbie with a Y is wearing a singlet. Wrestling singlet. Okay. okay. That, uh, that is uh, first of. That's the first of the day. That's a mood right there. And he is bouncing around the mat on his singlet. <laughs> In his singlet, he's ready to go. All right, and of course, Place of Peace guy. He's repping Place of Peace shorts and rash guard. Ooh. Nice tie up. Robbie with a Y. All smiles here. Gio found himself on top. Uh, ooh, ooh, but Robbie, Robbie with a uh, head and arm triangle. He had a head and arm triangle there from the bottom. Position and Gio let it go. Trying to pass that knee here, he might have it. He goes cross side pass with the knee. And Robbie's doing a good job of actually holding on to that knee that's trying to pass, which is very clever because it you might think it's a bad thing to do that, but actually, he just made yeah. made him reset. You know, Gio is attacking the other side knee slice, and Robbie is again using his hands to defend it, stop it from coming all the way through. Now, I'm just going to assume that Robbie with a Y's last name is Bloom because that's on the back of the singlet. But, uh, you know, it's... I would assume so as well, I think. <laughs> but Gio doing a good job staying on top. Keeping his weight nice and settled, nice and balanced. Now, not really allowing Robbie to do much with that position. I would like to see Gio's right foot come towards uh, Robbie's butt. Get that knee nice and high. It'll uh, make it a lot easier to go ahead and start passing. I think even here he could elevate because uh, Robbie is not really holding that mm -hmm. top leg. It's kind of just open mm -hmm. guard that's just there mm -hmm. near it. But definitely 
Gio could go back to the knee slice. I mean, he actually loses it here and allows Robbie to collect that foot. Oh, but maybe Robbie was baiting that because as soon as he went for it, Robbie had an answer for it. He has the it. ankle lock. And yes. He has it. So, you know what? Maybe Robbie now was he, just baiting it. And then the, he, so the knee line there, he collects it. The he, collection. This might be it. Yes. And he loses it. I thought he was going to go back into it, to be honest, because he collected the knee for it. But now he drops to his butt. He's got, he goes back to it again. He's looking for, like, an ankle crush here. Oh, oh. My goodness. I don't know if he's going to get that. In this. I think that's a... <laughs> that's the ankle crush. You get that where it's kind of awkward on your chest and you break the ankle, basically, by, by bringing it in. Robbie with a Y controlling the top position here and looking to pass the guard of Gio Vargas. Oh, and he falls, falls right back. back into the hill. Hook. This time, he, I think he has. No, his knee, the knee is still shallow. He could touch those knees. He could recollect the knee. And now Gio has his own ankle lock here attempt. Uh, 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 got to uh, get the leg. He got dang. it. You play with fire, you get burned. What a response by Gio Vargas to get the leg lock attempts thrown on him as much as he did. And then the return. Oh, what, what, a what a match. What a match. Great finish by Gio Vargas. Uh, defending a lot of heel attempts and a lot of leg locks. And then to basically say, you're going to do that, I'm going to respond with the same thing and hit him with it. Beautiful. Next up to the man representing Bethlehem. All right. We are on to the eight minute super fights, the ADC South super fights. I am excited for this. We start off with. Ryan Roth, a 10th planet, Bethlehem. 302. Michael Three. Ortiz. Oh. Going against Two. Michael Ortiz of 302 BJJ. This is going to be a good match. I I'm sorry, it. guys. Let me bark up one quick second. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Got to represent the teammate. I get it. I get it. Got to bark for my dog. <laughs> Here we go. Two big guys throwing I'm sorry, Lopez. I ain't bark up for you earlier. My apologies. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mike Lopez doing exactly what I was asking for earlier. Uh, you know, anytime you got a guy sitting down trying to play the leg lock game, lift their legs up, find, pick a direction, go in that direction. And Michael getting rolled to his side now. This is uh, not really a dangerous position for either guy because the not knees. Well, now it yet. turns into it almost. It looks like Ryan is really attacking that leg. Michael Ortiz needs to respect it a little bit more. I don't like how he's just allowing him to sit for the lower half and he's grabbing an ankle. Me, I him, I would be me shrimping out and trying to get a better position. Same here. Uh, Mike is also one of those freakishly strong dudes, so uh, don't be surprised if he finds himself into a bad position. Just kind of does the uh, the uh, good old Derek Lewis. Just, uh, I don't like being here. Let's stand up. Good old, good old just get up. <laughs> yep, just get up. Uh, I think he's trying to get himself better technically as a jiu-jitsu artist, but worse is worse. I would I would love to see him just pull some of that freaking strength off that he does at the gym. Was just like, all right, I'm done with this. Let's get up, guys. <laughs> I see Ray Mysterio in the corner. Yes. Of Michael Ortiz. Yes. Uh, <laughs> K-Pod. Uh, he is, uh, you know. He's uh, Ray Mysterio to me. Yeah. Do not let the costumes fool you. He is still a, uh, a black belt in jiu-jitsu. He is still well-versed. He, he does know what he's talking about. You know, he just uh, enjoys putting some laughs on people's faces. Uh, so <laughs> it's usually some type of costume that he puts. As well as, you know, he kind of ugly under there. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Love you, kid. <laughs> So uh, what I'd like to see Ryan do here is work a pass. He's just kind of staying in a dominant position without attacking any submissions. What's well, going to give Michael the opportunity to really get out of it? What I would like to see from uh, Michael Ortiz is for him to turn into his opponent. He's got a Kesek Gatame mm -hmm. hold Kesek right now. Tommy. have the position. It looks like it's actually the choke. He's going. He has the yeah. Kesek Gatame choke, almost like a scarf hold. Mm -hmm. Wow. Kesek Tommy. Or a scarf so Kesek Gatame or a scarf hold choke. Very good finish for a big man. That was nice. Give it up for your winner by submission, Ryan Roth. Ryan Roth with a scarf hold, hold position, position there. And hey, Mike, it. hold your head up high, brother. That was a good match. Good match.
Yeah. He's just trying not to uh, crunch on. Uh, what? You got can of cutting. Thank you. Next up to the mat, we welcome Kyle Myers. And representing Bones Academy, Vinny Corrado. All right, we are back. How Myers starting gets, off aggressively. It's Vinny Corrado of Bones Academy. Right to it. They're going right at it. Kyle and Vinny just right after each other here. I love that. Vinny staying aggressive on top here. I love the clubs. I love the uh, the pressure with the knee slice that he's given. Coach just told him to uh, be careful of uh, his knee. Almire's doing a great job, though, with this knee shield to stop him from passing and stabilize the guard here. I'll get back to it with the butterflies underneath. Kyle Myers, representing Saga Jiu-Jitsu, uh, I'm going to assume. Yep, Saga Jiu-Jitsu. Very deep voice from the corner. Yep, very, very. Of Serato. <laughs> hey, I like coaches with a, a voice that you can that you can just pinpoint on, like uh, uh, my coach Larry Edwards. He has a very deep voice. We call Larry it the Larry's voice. <laughs> yeah, you can hear Larry, Larry's voice out of any crowd. 100%. You know, uh, another person I really enjoy having in my corner is uh, Dev. Oh, but, you know, let's focus on these guys. Corrado doing a good job here, continuing to smash and stay heavy with this pass. He could go knee slice as well. He's just got to be careful because if he does go too high, Kyle could elevate him. The Bones Academy guys have been representing today. All of these guys have been looking fantastic. You know. Vinny Corrado, good control here. He could actually go right to the knee slice from this position because he has double unders. Well, he's got, I can't tell, I think he has one underhook. Almost there, and he gets to it, but Kyle defends, and now we're back to the square one. I like the control of the knees that Vinny... Very technical. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Vinny is not playing around. He is not trying to have any in-between time. Right back to it. At the exact same position, he just tried to pass it, but he has his arm caught. Go, go, out attempt. And Kyle's got it very slick in there. He's holding it. Kyle, Kyle with the submission attempts has Vinny right there, uh, which lets us know that was in a little deep. That that wasn't that wasn't just like a, a bad position submission. Very, and, very slick know. attempt by Kyle there, almost having that arm, making Vinny Serrato choose his passing at a proper, uh, smart way. I and slowed him down. Yeah. Uh, I think Vinny, uh, Vinny is getting his heart rate back down, uh, allowing himself to uh, breathe a little bit and bring himself back down to uh, back down to, to level three or four. The one thing I do not like is engage. what Kyle's putting that leg across, which Vinny could sit back for a hold. I don't think this is going to be that kind of match, which is, so Kyle's probably a little comfortable there, but He's got to be careful with that one leg that goes across Vinny's hip because it is going all the way across. It's easy to be heel hooked if the guy, if Vinny wanted to grab it. Mm. Staples. Now, if you're going to push that leg around, maybe a circle around behind it. Bring that, yep, bring that right knee on the outside of the hip. Okay, and Vinny Serrato, as we say, that he's going towards the pass here. He's still on half guard, but he could actually knee slice here very quickly. If he hits, if he uses that head and arm, and he gets head it, arm. the head and arm to the knee slice, and he's right in the submission, he's really tight. 
Kyle is fighting it the right way, but this is tight. This is all the way in, and he loses it. Yes, he does. However, head down, he could find his way back. Very good defense by Kyle to turn hard to the left there and force Vinny to give up on the submission, but he is still fully mounted. And this is a dangerous spot. If Vinny just uses his fingers to walk his hands up the mat he, and uh, slide his head off to the right, he could find himself right back to the head and arm, head and arm triangle. 100%. Uh, Kyle's doing a good yep, job, though. And that's a great job from his corner. And he Put the gets ear there. behind the tricep. He gets there. Elbow, his right elbow needs to now come closer towards the body. Yep, he has it. Sprawl the hips and kind of scoot yourself off to that right-hand side a little bit to finish this position or finish this submission. Kyle, I think what Kyle uh, needs to do here is he needs to get a, a hard bridge to his left. A hard bridge and circle the elbow high. Ooh. If he can get a hard bridge to circle the elbow high, he can get out of this right now. But yes, he could. At the moment, Vinny is seeming to back off because he doesn't want to lose the position. Loses the submission, but then goes right back to it. At our angle right now, it looks like he is about a couple inches away from locking it in. Yep, he just needs to get his forehead down to the mat, drop those hips a little bit more, and keep that right elbow, and rather, right next to uh, Kyle's body or underneath him. So Kyle's doing a great job. Every time that that pressure goes that way, he bridges to the left and gets the elbow just high enough where he cannot continue to arm triangle. Two minutes in here, this is looking like it is Vinny's match. Controlling the top pressure, throwing submission attempts, really being uh, unforgiving here on top, which is what he needs to do, and he is doing it very well. He's gonna try to kick into the, into the leg. Mm. Trying. What I would like to see Vinny do is get that uh, that meat hook or that meat cleaver. Or we can finish the head and arm. We can. We finish the head and arm, or we can. Kyle is trying everything here to get out of this position. He ends up coming out, but he gives the backup doing so. And now Vinny is in full back control off of an escape attempt. You got your points. Don't worry about it. Kyle Myers is looking to get to a dominant position, but he has mm -hmm. been on the defensive end the whole match. And Vinny now has a body lock with that back control. Now, I wonder if Vinny knows he can pull the hands up. Uh, he can pull the hands up and lock his hands behind the head for a nice little full Nelson. That actually still works as a very nice submission. The hands behind the head, push on the head, hey, boom. Vinny has done a great job all match, constantly throwing things at Kyle, making him always second guess what he should do. Every time Kyle ever responded with a get up or a response, Vinny has had an answer. Mm -hmm. And we're looking about 20 seconds away from a Vinny Serrato victory by unanimous decision here. Oh, and Kyle falls for the heel. Oh, almost a little too late. A little too late, and, but I tell you what, I love it. I love Kyle trying right here, really trying to come back and get something. Great match by both men. Vinny Serrato becoming the immovable force in that match. Just staying on Kyle every single where he went. Kyle had great attempts, great defenses, but Vinny with the win. Beautiful win. All right. Great win by Vinny Serrato. Dominant victory. Controlled, I think, top to bottom. The whole match, other than the small submission attempts that, well, mainly one submission attempt that, uh, or two actually, that uh, Kyle threw in, but it was ready. Yes, he was. He had a response for everything there. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Beautiful job from uh, both sides. Um, I would like to see uh, Kyle with a little bit more of a different game plan, maybe for the uh, next match, you know, if uh, the leg locks don't, leg lock game doesn't work, uh, you know, possibly go for something else, stand up, transition to a different type of position, but, you know, Vinny had a lot of top heavy pressure, so, uh, maybe. Def definitely more urgency. 
definitely more urgency going forward. Kyle's a great grappler, I know of him, but in a match like that, it's all about urgency. That's what gets the job done when there's two high level grapplers pushing each other. And we are on to the next match. We are getting closer to the main event, okay? Which is gonna be Joe Mayal versus Desmond McDonald. Craig. Right now, Craig. Oh, was it Craig? No, no, I'm looking. I'm talking about the main event. I'm getting excited. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Next, oh. right now. Sorry, we're talking about the next one. I'm getting excited. Craig McDonald versus Gianno Grippo. This is going to be, or Gianni Grippo, sorry. It's going to be a great match. Craig McDonald of Underground Arts and Gianni Grippo of Gianni Grippo Academy. This is going to be a very technical match. I'm excited to see what happens here. Gianni already starting from his butt. Looking to create that sequence. Craig doing a good job of being calm here. Mm -hmm. Really fighting those legs, trying to find his way around them. Gianni pulling yep. right for the leg right away. Has it deep for a second. But it's Craig going. with a good answer. Craig's got a heel hook of his own. Craig yes. could go for the finish here, but go, I think he is thinking about where Gianni's going to end up. I think he's trying to find a good position first before he goes for the uh, submission. You know, with, uh, as we know, the leg lock game is a 50-50 one, so Ooh, and sometimes you don't. Right to mount off of the response of the leg lock. But Craig has a, a deep half. Uh, that's not really... Gianni's to find some space here. Doing a good job of. Oh, and he goes for the oh, Dars right away. Let's go, quickly. Craig. He has it very tight right here. This is dangerous for Craig. He has Craig to find a way out of this. Good job with the defense. And Gianni, he patient and says, whatever, I will look for another submission. Anaconda attempt next. Great defense by Craig there. there. Very slick attempts by Gianni. Johnny Grippo. Oh, he has his own academy. He does have his own academy. Oh. Let's go, Craig. About six minutes, Johnny. Very controlled. Non-stop attacks coming here from Gianni. So he's Go looking Craig. for that Dars again. For the, it goes to Peruvian. Craig rolled at the perfect time to be able to defend the Peruvian, which gets him out. Mm. Perfect. Perfect response by Craig McDonald to roll at the exact same time that Gianni fell Craig, for the Peruvian to stop the attack. Ooh. Craig going with the cartwheels pass. Oh, I like it. I like it. Showing off here. You know, it's uh, so one of those effective passes that works against guys that you know are going for leg locks. Um, hey. But if you see that one isn't working, again, grab those legs. Start throwing them around like they're battle ropes. On, uh, I do not like this position for Craig. Getting that leg intertwined, cross between Gianni's. Very good escape there by Craig, running out. <laughs> Doing the running man escape, I like it. <laughs> Come on, Craig. And Craig Dang responds Craig. by locking up the, the heel position. Gianni is responding correctly. He goes right to a banana split position here almost. To try to get towards the back. He could actually Ooh. be looking for a twister. twister. He is looking for the twister, ladies and gentlemen. Craig, you got four if minutes. Gianno, Gianni Grippo hits this twister, I'm going out and high-fiving him. I already said it earlier. I already said it. He's Don't turning. That, He's Craig. cranking it right. He's cranking it. He has the position. And he's right there. Gianni is looking for that twister submission. Kick that knee off. Kick that knee off. Craig is responding the way he Dude, needs to yes, here. This is a tough over. position. Anyone Great who, job of defending this. Anyone who has been in here knows it is not easy to get out of this. And he gets the... He's getting a high five from me. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Gianni. Gianni. Gianni Grippo with a twister choke. I mean... You don't see too many of those. So it is always nice when you do see one. It, it, it's just a really nice.
that was really nice. Next up to the mat, representing Alliance, Venetius Behetta. Mm, I'm a man of my word. If I say someone, even if it's my like a teammate that I care about, I love Craig, but you know, you, I said whoever gets whoever gets a twist or submission, I'm gonna get my high five, and you can't hate on that. I'm never I'm never gonna hate on jitsu submissions. Devante Johnson. <laughs> All right, Devante Johnson. We are on to the very important matches today. Starting off, I mean, the other ones are very important. I'm sorry, this is a big match though. We have Vinicius Ferreira of Alliance and Devante Johnson of Unity. Two very high-level grapplers here, competed in ADCC and a bunch of other high-level tournaments. These guys are very good grapplers. Make sure you watch this right now. All right, and I like the VHTS from Ferreira. Vinicius Ferreira, I said it right correctly, I think. Ferreira, Bones. So I Let's used to see. say Ferreira, but obviously it's not that. I pronounced the Brazilian names correctly. Yep, the, the R's are the H's <laughs> in, the, in the Portuguese language. I think there is a good size difference here with Devante being a little taller, both very thick. Mm -hmm. Both thick guys, strong guys. Devante a little taller, both high level black belts, very high level here. This is going to be. Both with their own academy, right? Both with their own academies yep. as well. Yes. Uh, Bones has been instructing a lot of guys with some of the best coaching of the night. I'd say it's between him and um, what's the, uh, the young woman with the uh, orange hair? Uh, Jin, Ginger Ninja. Or Ginger Ninja, sorry. Yep, Ginger Ninja. Ginger Ninja. <laughs> I yep. think it's Ginger Ninja. I, b I believe between Bones and Ginger Ninja, uh, those two have been some of the best coaches of the day. Uh, you know, just so clear, so concise, so so easy for their fighters to digest what they were uh, what they were asking for. Can't get any better. I mean, I do want to still shout out uh, uh, Rick McLees. Ricardo McLees. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, still want to shout him out, of course. You know, the uh, head black belt uh, above all the balanced guys, but. Still just uh, amazing coaching done by Bones. I can't w wait to see what he does here on the mat today. Very very technical match right now. Both guys mm -hmm. are not giving an inch. Both trying to get the hand fight to win in their position to be able to get an underhook of some kind. Both, though, staying super solid in the, in the right base here. They're not giving up anything. Uh, both of these guys are uh, Jersey wrestlers, aren't they? Maybe. Are they Jersey wrestlers? Uh, I do not know the background. I know, uh, I think, Vinicius Fajeda is a black belt. He trains with Alliance. I think he's from Brazil. Oh, never mind. I know Devontae Johnson is a local guy from Unity originally, but has his own academy bones as well. But both very high-level grapplers competed at the highest level against some of the best guys in the world. This is the kind of match I think we need to add another five minutes on. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I want to see some, some shit go down. <laughs> yeah, you know we're going to at least spend about five minutes of this. You know, uh, it, both both of these guys are, are alphas, so I don't think you're really going to see either one sit to their butt. And they're both trying to get on top and uh, plot some of that, uh, that old school crush your jiu-jitsu especially with the way we've seen matches go i know and these guys have both cornered guys i think i'm pretty sure actually Devontae's cornered a bunch i don't know if mm -hmm. Vinicius has cornered any fighters today but one thing we do know i think they are thinking about and realizing is you cannot be ending up on bottom unless you want to attack and he ends up on bottom actually goes mm -hmm. just pulls guard he's saying i'm tired of the time wasted i want to try some jiu-jitsu have to be careful though. Pulling guard has not helped everyone today. Guys that have pulled guard, if they weren't able to do enough off of their off their back and off their butt, then they've lost the match by decision. This is a very close match. Vinicius pulling guard and choosing that route could help him or could hurt him here. Wonder what Barnes is looking to do here. Look up, looking to pass on the uh Pass on the right side. And he goes, he gets the sweep, trying to attack that. And they hit the, the carpet outside there for a second, getting that rug burn. Does not feel good. Right. And right into it. 
So what we see Vinicius is trying to attack that leg and he's using the elevation to elevate uh, to elevate Bones and get him in the air to be able to attack a leg. But Devontae is really good at controlling that base. Let's see him jump to that full guard or to that triangle. Come on, Vontae, go for it. Devontae trying to control the posture and grab a leg, and Vinicius is not having it. He, he said, you are not controlling my posture. You are not going to get that. Oh, a great pass, man. Wow, that was set up so quickly. Yeah, you heard the whole... So quickly, I love it. You heard the building come alive for that. <laughs> to be able to hit that pass as fast as he did and Vinicius to bring his hips back as quickly as he did, this is such a high-level match right here. I know you guys are just watching a lot of the intro, but this is how it goes. When you get to high-level grapplers like this, it's going to be a lot of the beginning process before because it takes one mistake to end the match. Both neither guys want to do that. I want to get the finish and get the hand raised. Mm, a little bit of a stalemate position here between the two guys, but that's what you expect when you know when you have mastered all of the basics <laughs> and you've mastered many parts of the game, and now you're going against someone else who has mastered many parts of the game. It's easy to find yourselves in these uh, little bit of stealth mix positions. And Devante is explosive and strong. He is a strong guy. And Vinicius is now almost had a leg, and the Devante said, "Nope, pulled it right out." Yep. Just use some of that power and just like, nah, no thanks. I'll power through this one. I mean, not to say Vinicius is not strong. I mean, every black belt is strong as hell, and that's one thing that is true. But. Watching Bones go through these transitions, this guy is explosive and he's moving so fast that if you're not at the same speed, it's hard to keep up. And there he ends up in a back control for a second and then loses it. Great technique by Vinicius to turn back into him. But wow, what explosion and speed from Bones to get that. Devante is on point here today. Shout out we have to a minute and 30 left. It's looking like Bones might have gotten it with that small position change for a second. Shout out to Devontae with the blind tips on the uh, end of those locks. I see you, brother. <laughs> I like that. I exactly. Like that. Those you got to match him, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. So what Vinicius is going to have to do here, he's going to have to turn it up a little bit more than he normally would just because it's been a very close match and the only time that points would be technically have been scored, even though this is a non-point match, it's decision-based, was when Devante real quickly passed and ended up in the second of the back control. Vinicius did get up, but that has been the only action of the match in terms of jiu-jitsu. Therefore, so far it is right now Devante looking like he will be coming away with it. Unless Vinicius can make something happen in the last 45 seconds here. Wow, I'm talking. Almost the arm drag to go. Man, Vinicius is tough, but I think Devontae just has a little too much today. He's been explosive in every angle. Oh, as I say that, he almost hits a fireman's carry, and we're on the mat, we're on the rug right now. This is crazy. They are still going. Off the mat they are completely. Still going. Three oh, seconds. This is great. What? Wow. What a match. Wow. Give it up. If you're at home, give it up. What a match. Off the mat, onto the rug, still grappling, still going. Give it up for your winner by a decision. And Devontae wins it as expected. A little busier. Both guys defended all their attempts except for when Devontae got the position for a little bit. Yes, that was. Oh, yes. That's, yes. Cookie, that's the cookie monster right there. But again, with those type of Great deep match. voices. I think, uh, I think Vinicius Corner is a little upset with the decision. Mm -hmm. I understand. But, I, I mean, if you look at the match, in reality, 
the only jujitsu the only jujitsu that took place was the brief you? second when but when uh, Devontae passed and got to the back, not even real back, but it was a version of it, had the hip. Yep. And tried to get to it, Vinicius got it up, but that's really the only time there was jitsu. Yep. You have to score it based off of that one time. You can't base it off of one guy's pushing more than the other guy. Vinicius pulled guard, that's not a takedown. So in reality, the only real jiu-jitsu goes to the guy who won. I think yeah. he won. And not, I mean, not he, a landslide, but he won. He, he won the match. He did attempt the, that, uh, that duck under to the fireman's carry, but uh, it just wasn't enough. Devontae was doing everything he needed to do to uh, nullify the game, yeah. try to go for his attacks. Then once he had the opportunity, go ahead and start attacking the back. Or at least, you know, trying. Regardless, great match. Yeah, a great match. Uh, I'm excited for the next one. That was awesome. I want to see more of that. Heck Can yeah. we just get Devontae and him to go again? <laughs> exactly. Let's just get Devontae and Vinicius to go again. I Run think that back. Good. I think another 10, <laughs> another 10 minutes for those yeah, two. Yeah, I'll do that. We might be able to figure something out. <laughs> they should have just did that one as sub only, because I know those dudes would have went to their, <laughs> to their, to their broker. Marcelo Garcia, Ruan Alvarenga. All right. Again. Basil Hafez, joined by my friend A.T. McCown. Place of Peace Invitational. We've had some great matches today, some great jiu-jitsu, and we are getting to the latter half of it. And representing Underground Arts, the founder of Place of Peace. Here we go. Please welcome Desmond McDonald. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Let's go. This is a match I am super excited for. If you don't know, Place of Peace Invitational founder, Place of Peace founder, and the guy who's running this whole tournament, Dez, is competing right now. Himself, he is a black belt. He's a savage as well, a great competitor, and also a fighter. And he is hopping in the tournament. After checking on all of the fighters, Tasty. bouncing around, making sure that the film crew and we all good, you know. I love it. And still, uh, make sure to find some time to good do what he loves. So here, so here we are, Ruan Alvarenga taking from Marcelo Garcia Academy, taking on Desmond McDonald, the underground martial arts. I know that we have one guy is is very well known grappler, but do not sleep on Dez. He is quick. Wow, these guys are going at it. I love it. Dez not settling into this uh, this bottom position at all. Right into a buggy choke. Ooh, okay, and he has the, he has it super deep right now. It is very deep. And he shakes oh, out of he it. Shakes wow. out of it. Yes. Ruan, Ruan with a great response there. Oh, it's a Juan or Juan? Juan, right? I, I'm pretty sure this man is Brazilian. I will be saying Juan instead of Ruan. My apologies. Juan? Juan. No, R. Juan. Juan and Alvar Juan Alvarenga. He has the side control right now on the head and arm, using the knee right there on the hip of Dez to control him and stop him from switching to the right hip which is what Dez wants to do to get that space and get that left knee inside. Ooh, oh, right to right mount. Right mount. Beautiful job. He's now walking those hands up, trying to get the head and arm. Very quick in the Head mount. and arm triangle. Bro, Dez, don't accept that. Coach speaking full Portuguese, so I can't quite uh, point out everything that they're saying. Picking up a few things, but not all of it. <laughs> we try, but it's not going to be a good translation. Juan right now doing a great job oh, of settling. Okay. He settled down in that mount position, and he's really just kind of taking his time. He did like a lot of guys have gotten here today and rushed right out of it. He has gotten there. He's taking his time. He's breathing, yep. especially what a black belt would do. He's not rushing this. And Dez doing a good job of staying There's confident and calm minutes, on the Dez. bottom here. Good shrimp here, trying to get his hips out. Juan keeps collecting. Every time the shrimp happens, Juan keeps collecting back up. Nice bump and shrimp attempt. Trying to get all the way on the hip. But well, Juan do, Juan's doing a good job here of, of keeping that hook underneath that bottom side hip there. And what it's doing is it's stopping Dez's ability to fully shrimp out. It keeps him stable in that position. It looks like he can move, but he really cannot based off that right underhook. Locking on his hip right here. Mm -hmm. Juan just is so dominant here on top right now. Uh, again, working, trying to walk his hands up to get that uh, that head and arm triangle position. 
Guy's doing everything Go possible here to defend this. Now it's looking, Keep going into a head and arm. Des could de defend this if he circles to his left. He, or he bases to a left and get the elbow high. He could get out of this. Get that left hip on the mat, right hip up, which will allow him to get his arm around. And right. as we there say we that, go. he gets it out. Let's go, Des. Juan doing a great job of not letting that deter him. And Juan Des, right back to it. And right he has it deep it. right now. Des escaped and Juan just went right back into it. Didn't even hesitate. Now, just for uh, my my viewers' perspective, anytime we are trying to finish uh, this head and arm triangle, we do not want our elbow that far away from our uh, our opponent's body. Keep the elbows tight. Des doing a great job here of shooting that arm high, trying to get a circle motion here to bridge up and circle the elbow around the head. No longer in a head and arm. It goes for the arm bar. This could be bad. This is in a bad spot right oh, here. And Dez, Dez has to come a... in, drive his head in the middle. He has to bring his head inside. If he can bring his head inside, he can come inside to it. This is very tough, as you know. Juan knows what he's doing. He's a high-level black belt. And Dez gets the head inside. He's got to come into him here, which could be a triangle. And then back to the arm bar, gets the tap. What high-level transitioning here from Juan Alvarenga. Just constantly transitioning, finishes with a submission. Can't, you can't beat that. Give it up for your winner by our block, Ruan Alvarenga. Great match, great tough match for Desmond McDonald, owner oh, yeah. of Place of Peace, competing with one of the best guys in the world here yes. <laughs> at Juan Alvarenga. But Juan showed his superiorness in the grappling there, getting the submission attempts. Great defense by Des, even better finish by Juan. But we still got Dez coming up later for our main event. Oh, yeah, we do. Dez is competing again. <laughs> Would you believe that? Who else is setting up the tournament, has the clothing for everyone, and competes twice while he's working the same day? Yep. De Dez is competing against Juan Alvarenga, world-class grappler. He's going to come back again for the main event against Joe Mayal. And we got Ricardo Miglarese right here. We got the animal. You, you're you not here, you're missing out. I'm going to be honest. This on 20. This on 45. <laughs> yeah, so we got Dez coming back again, competing a second time tonight. So he's going against two of the best, some of the best grapplers in the world, mind you. He's okay. I just want to thank everybody for coming out. All the competitors that came out, thank you very much. Many competitors want to grab some shoes. You saw me. Just your name. You want some gear. Really do appreciate everyone of you guys coming out. Got a hey, thank you, Des. I got a tattoo Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And we are shortly moving on. We have two matches left. Just hit pop. Hit. Yeah. What are you talking about? We are? We don't have two matches. That's it. Oh, I got a list here that says we got two matches. <laughs> that was it? A lot of changes. A That's lot of changes. it. Oh, man. I, I messed up on the commentary. I'm like, we got one more match coming up. Are you popping on Monday? Is that it then? I'm getting tattooed on, oh. tattooed on Monday. Did we say? Did we say? We're good then, G. That's a wrap. I didn't even know. Wrap we, it up. we didn't even ready for it. Say goodbye. All right, guys. Oh, wait, that yeah, is yeah, the yeah, end okay. of the show. Uh, it's been a great time. I'm AT McCowan. That's my mom. This is Basil. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Yo, I hope Place you guys enjoyed peace. it. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I won't be back, but maybe next time. But AT will be here for sure. Yes, and, sir. And uh, we hope you guys enjoyed our commentating. We yes, did our sir. best. And uh, come grapple with us sometime. Yes. <laughs> See you guys later. Peace. Yeah, I wasn't ready for that.